Here's what we're gonna do. If you're watching my channel, okay, let's just do this, let's do this. You know that I cover a nuanced gray area of the perspectives because between the bubbles arguing, there's always room for nuance. And usually people with their bias and prejudice, and all of us have that within us, end up picking sides based off of where we've come from, who our parents are, what we understand about the world, where our politics are, how we understand ourselves in the world around us, right? So ultimately, if we're talking about Ethan, who's married to an Israeli, who he himself is Jewish, we can assume his bias is gonna go in that direction. If we're talking about Palestine and Israel as a conflict, well, if you're Gen Z and younger, you're more likely to be pro-Palestinian. And if you're older or Jewish, you're more likely to be pro-Israel, though there's a deviation in that, even from Israelis themselves, where a lot of people who are even Israeli and young are pro-Palestine, or at least a two-state solution. So if you look at this politically, which we're not going to do because this is no longer a politics channel, I'm years retired from doing politics, okay, there's always going to be sides and people have to choose on levels which political goal is their goal. So are you politically inclined to win wars? Are you politically inclined to get territory? Are you politically inclined to fight for your people specifically? Or are you politically inclined to move to towards sort of a a peace solution, which usually looks like two state solutions, which are obviously and have been rejected over the years from participants in the region. So pol politics is not the goal of this channel. I don't want to think, I don't want to misinform you that this is about politics. I, I've been out of politics. I think politics just makes people miserable. And I think it brings out the ugliness in people. And I want to promote the beauty in people. And I think people are so much better than politics allows. So instead, I thought we would try to look at this from a very, very human perspective. And I thought we would try to consider, one, what would make somebody do what Aaron did, uh, Aaron Bushnell. And then two, why do people like Ethan have the reaction he has? And what have been sort of the other reactions from other communities? I also have a Muslim teacher, his reaction as a Muslim, how he feels about the situation. And then just like, to mention a few people in the media, generally, if you're politically one way, I've noticed that if you're pro-Israel, you think Aaron Bushnell committed suicide. If you're pro-Palestine, you look at him more like somebody who was brave. So already the bias comes into play. And the way the two groups are twisting the narrative is very interesting. And so let's just keep that all in mind as we move forward. Also, not to be such a philosophy dork, but I love Tao Te Ching. It's just like a really easy, simple book with easy and simple passages. Um, and I thought we could go ahead and just read a couple of them before I start because it's just nice to keep in mind. <clears throat> so as an example, this is number 13 in Tao Te Ching, Avoid Extremes. It says, flattery and disgrace are both to be feared, just as overeating and starvation are both harmful to the body. Flattery is fattening to the spirit and disgrace is em emaciating. Overconcern is just as harmful as disregard. Treat yourself well, but don't pamper yourself excessively. If rulers treat the people in the same way, neither too soft nor too hard, they are worthy to be trusted with authority. Okay, so we're dealing with authority and government and power. We're dealing with so much corruption and just human. You know, what does it mean to be a human? Number 29 is called power. It says, those who try to seize power and remake society will fail. Society is a divine thing that cannot be remade. One who attempts to remake it will only deface it. Those who grasp for power will lose it. People differ. Some lead, some follow. Some are passionate, others are reserved. Some are strong, others weak. Some succeed and others fail. The wise respect the roles of all and seek moderation in all things. So as we're going through this and we're thinking about what's happening, we are really thinking about the nuance of what it means to be a person, right? And so everyone's going to have a different relationship with that. Why do you think we exist? What do you think we're doing here? What do you think our goals are? Goals are Since we're speaking about Israel and Palestine, we're speaking about very specific parts of the world that are incredibly inspired by religion, so a belief in a higher creator. And some, and, and some of them sort of believe in a uh, given right, in existing, a given right. They believe they have a connection to a higher power. So here on this channel, we're generally sec secularists. Of course, there could be religious people in the community, and I love that. But generally, we are 
pretty atheistic or secular. And so it's going to be a little bit more difficult for us to even look at that region and think that they're not just, you know, sort of entitled in a way, because the religious people, if you're religious, you sort of have an entitlement of God made you, God made you in his image. You've been put on earth for a reason. So there's a lot of entitlement that can come with that, that I think ends up lending itself probably a, a disservice to the communities. So let's go ahead and check this out together. Oh my God, I'm already nervous. Please link the stream. I mean, like the stream, like the stream, don't link it. Well, you can link it too, but like the stream because I'm nervous. I feel like I'm about to get canceled myself, but I'm trying to give a little bit of nuance, right? So check this out. This is from The Guardian, okay? So this is an article about air and I just want us to go over so we're all on the same page because I, to be honest with you, didn't really pay attention to the story until yesterday when I got a bunch of requests over the week uh, for me to cover this. And then yesterday I did a deep dive and I just tried to understand what's going on. So U.S. Air Force member dies after setting himself on fire outside of Israeli embassy. That's a pretty big deal. Aaron Bushnell, 25, declared he will no longer be complicit in the genocide before setting himself alight in Washington, D.C. Okay. An active duty member in the U.S. Air Force has died after setting himself on fire outside the Israeli embassy in Washington, D.C. while declaring he will no longer be complicit in genocide. The man who the man was identified as 25-year-old airman Aaron Bushnell of San Antonio, Texas. The Metropolitan Police Department said it responded to an incident on the International Drive around 1 p.m. on Sunday to assist the Secret Service. A video posted online showed Bushnell in a uniform shouting, Free Palestine, as he burned while identifying himself as an active Air Force member. He was, repeat, he was reportedly on fire for about a minute before law, law enforcement officers put it out. Bushnell walked up to the embassy and began live streaming on the video streaming platform Twitch. A person familiar with the matter told the Associated Press. Okay. He set his phone down, then doused himself in a fluid and set it alight, saying at one point he will no longer be complicit in the genocide, the source told AP. The video was later removed from the streaming platform. As an Air Force spokesman confirmed to... Uh, Agents France Press, I don't know how to say that, that Bushnell was an active member but gave no further details. A spokesman for the Israeli embassy said no staff were injured and the man was unknown to them. A Facebook post attributed to Bushnell circulated on Tuesday, uh, or I'm sorry, on Twitter on Monday reading, many of us like to ask ourselves, what would I do if I was alive during slavery or the Jim Crow South or apartheid? What would I do if my country was committing genocide? The answer is you're doing it right now. The authenticity of the post could not be immediately verified. The police said um, an explosive, wait, an explosive ordnance disposal unit was called to the scene in relation to a suspicious vehicle possibly linked to the individual. No hazardous material were found. The embassy has been the focus of protests by pro-Palestinian demonstrators calling for a ceasefire to the Israeli military offensive in Gaza, in which the, the claimed death toll appears likely to be likely to pass 30,000 this week. The offensive follows cross-border attacks in Israel by Hamas in, Oct in October 7th that killed 1,200 people and in which more than 200 people were taken hostage. Israeli strikes have killed 29,692 Palestinians in Gaza since October, two-thirds of them women and children, and injured 69,879, according to Gaza's Hamas-run health service. In a, separation, in a separate incident, in December last year in Atlanta, outside of the Israeli consulate office, a protester set themselves on fire. The protester and a guard were hospitalized in the burns. Then the Guardian goes on to say, in the U.S., you can call or text the National on a living prevention li lifeline. So it's kind of interesting that they associated that with this story. I think that sort of stands out to me. Okay, so that's the gist of the story. <clears throat> okay, so I know it, it's kind of interesting it's not pretty common that somebody would set themselves on fire, but also it's not pretty uncommon either in terms of protest. Apparently, Buddhist monks do it quite often, which I think is interesting. I think that is a very interesting thing. Kenny says, was Aaron Bushnell a bit unhinged? So I did some more like work, like I looked more into his past, not a lot, but some of the articles do quote his friends and family as saying that he was an extremist, that he came from an extremist cult background. He was a Christian 
and that when he picked an identifying, like an identification, he would swing very hard into those bubbles. So Aaron himself did seem to have a history, according to family and friends, of when he was a believer of something, he would go to the max extreme, but also he grew up in a cult, um, high control environment. And then he moved to a high control environment in the in the Air Force. So obviously he had a sort of pattern. Now, it's interesting because some people felt like this was unaliving, right? Some people felt like this was a protest and it was brave. Some people felt like he was doing this for attention, but it wasn't really for Palestine Palestinians. Some people felt like, wow, like I wish I could do that for Palestinians, but I'm going to say this right now. I believe you have the right to live and die how you want. Absolutely. But it will not help Palestinians to light yourself on fire. I don't know if you guys know that, but if the U.S. military doesn't care about its own soldiers or its own people, I don't know why they'd care about one soldier killing themselves for Palestinians that they're already funding Israel to bomb. Right. So just a reminder. They're not going to. They're not going to care. So I, I don't know why anyone thinks this is like a reasonable form of protest. But to be fair, you can do what you want. <sighs> if you go here, this is list of um, people who have since 1948 till now uh, basically set themselves ablaze. And the reasonings are really interesting. I just like was reading through some of them today. So many of them were Buddhist monks. Like here, you can read them here. So Buddhist, Buddhist, Buddhist monk, Buddhist monk. Like so many were Buddhist monks. And I think that's really, really interesting. A lot of them just felt like forced or pressured or felt like there was nothing left to do. So they felt like, okay, I have to do this. And if you're doing something out of desperation, I feel like there, there's something to be said about that. Right? So this is kind of interesting. Some people just did it out of like uh, mourning, but mostly in relation to protest. This is all protest related incidences. So their their sense of protest. So it's interesting. There's a lot here. Um, even a Catholic, I read a Catholic was on the list and I was like, okay. So there's a lot of interesting stories to be read about them. I didn't read them all, obviously. Now, something about being brave is always interesting to me. Something about fighting for what you believe in is always interesting to me. Because obviously if Aaron Bushnell, and this is again, I'm just making the arguments. I'm not saying like whether how I think necessarily. I'm just trying to share what I, you know. If Aaron Bushnell is brave for setting himself on fire to protest Israel's occupation of Palestine, then every Israeli is brave for fighting against Palestine because you're fighting for what you believe in. You can talk about right or wrong, but since everything is subjective, we're talking about our beliefs. If the military, like if Aaron Bushnell is brave for what he did to himself, then anyone is brave for defending themselves. I don't think you could argue that. So the question is, why does Aaron, why is he considered brave for what he did? Right? I want to know what, why do people feel that particular way about him? That he gets the word brave associated. What do you think about military soldiers in America? who occupy places around the world or fight in wars or fought in Iraq or how do you feel about those people? Because they certainly feel like they're doing it for an incredibly good reason. What do you think about the people that did 9-11? They felt like they were doing it for an incredibly good reason. You know, everyone in life seems to think they're doing it for a very good reason. And I think that that, that is why the road to hell is paved in good intentions because I think so many people have so many good intentions, right? What do you guys think? Yeah, he says some, uh, something that needs a huge spotlight on it. Sadly, he did it in the absolute horrendous way in a way I don't think he needed to do, but I hope it opened some people's eyes. Yeah, I think it probably did the opposite. I'm going to be real. I can't imagine that this would be very motivational to anybody. You know what I mean? And I don't know if what this could have, like I couldn't imagine this changing anyone's mind. It's just too it's too different of a protest style. Protests in general are not very welcomed by society. Most people are very annoyed with protests. Even if they feel oppressed by the system, most people do get frustrated with them. So watching a man, you know, unalive himself feels very strange. But I wonder what kind of a person would be changed by this. You know what I mean? You know, what does that look like? And do we even know he was really a good person? What if he's actually like a horrible person who just wanted the spotlight on him like every white man we know? What if he doesn't care about Palestinians? 
what makes us think he even cares about them so much as he just wanted to have a legacy death, right? Like, do we know that? Chrissy says, could you argue that he was mentally ill? If he goes heavily into the bubble, he gets involved in. I don't know if that makes sense. Well, that's the dilemma is we don't actually know. Like, we know why he said he did it. But I would love to know his history as a person. What has he been doing? You would think that unaliving himself would be the least productive form of protest, especially in a place like America or Israel where or the West in general, where we don't value that necessarily. Like, that's not a valued part of protest. So it doesn't make sense. Like, why would you do that? You know what I mean? Most religions think it's unacceptable, even Islam. Like, Christians and Muslims alike, unaliving yourself is not okay. That's why this association with Islam being about suicide bombers is just like, those are the extremists. They're, it's not even according to their religion. You're not allowed to unalive yourself, dude. It's not allowed. You can only fight back and be, you know, have a sense of like, uh, I'm defending my country, but that's not the same. So let's go ahead and check this out. This is Ibrahim, Ibrahim uh, Hindi. He is, I think, a Muslim teacher on YouTube. I saw his video and thought it was interesting. And let's just see what he has to say about it because he's telling us about Islam directly. And I think since most Palestinians are Muslim, I thought we could go ahead and talk about that. How should we as Muslims see what Aaron Bushnell did? For those who don't know, Aaron Bushnell, an active member of the U.S. Air Force, set himself on fire to protest the genocide that is happening in Gaza. Obviously, Islam forbids unaliving oneself. This is very clear throughout the Qur'an and the Sunnah. And Aaron is not Muslim, so he doesn't follow Islamic jurisprudence. How should we as Muslims see what he did? What he did is a very extreme form of protest, trying to force a nation to look at the evil that it is participating in. As Muslims, I think we should be saying, the act that he did is an act that we would not do, that goes against our faith. However, the place from which this act comes from, the desperation that drove him to this act, is one that we should feel connected to. Quran talks about our Prophet Quran says that our Prophet, it was as though he was going to kill himself in his grief. He was going to die from his internal sadness and grief. Why? Because people were choosing falsehood. People were rejecting the truth. People were doing evil. And he felt so upset that the people were doing evil that Allah describes him twice in the Quran as though he's going to kill himself out of that feeling of desperation and sadness over for what the people are doing. So I feel an affinity towards the desperation that Aaron felt that caused him to set himself ablaze to make people realize the evil that they are participating in. I feel that desperation even if I don't agree with the particular act that he did. Okay, so why aren't politicians listening what, it, to us? It, 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 We've been okay, so I think that's a really normal ex expected take from the religious bubbles that I understand if I understand Mus like Islam Muslims and like what they believe I expected this reaction right and so I wonder how that plays a role and how people are perceiving the action if most Palestinians are religious and they are pretty m like well religious you know what I mean does this actually help their cause or does it make it look sort of worse. You know what I mean? Do we want to see more life and optimism when thinking about Palestinians or do we want to think about more death? Do we have to think about death because that's what they're being impacted by? So again, when we think about why someone does something, why do you think Aaron did this? It's hard to say because it feels a little bit like he took a burden upon himself that had nothing to do with him and made it about him. And at the same time, Maybe he did feel very pressured. Maybe he did feel incredibly motivated. Maybe he did feel inspired and he wanted to say something about the world and how it acts. The dilemma is that I'm not sure Palestine is a unique experience when we talk about global violence and we talk about death tolls and war. So overall, if you just look at numbers, obviously the world is getting less violent and we're doing much better. And then obviously tragedy happens every day and has always happened every day. And Palestine is one of many tragedies. And without a doubt, what's happening in Palestine is not OK. It is very much a part of a political strategy. It is very much a politics game. And politics plays with your life every day. And that is what the whole world since day one was built on. You know, we don't always know the history of the world, but from our understandings of it, it, it 
formed into societies and societies are political. And then therefore you are the part of that political um, fodder that ends up occurring, right? Okay. So um, now if Aaron was somebody of relevance, if he was somebody famous, if he was somebody that we knew, I think it probably would have been different. But because he was no one that we knew, it feels of like a very narcissistic decision to do this, in my opinion. And I also, I do sort of denounce the action itself, not because I think you don't have the right to unalive yourself. I think you do. I just think like why you do it matters. And it feels a little bit too much like white man makes it about himself to me. Okay. But why would he do that? Well, he could be mentally ill. He could be, again, incredibly distraught over Palestine. He could have helped in a lot of other ways, I feel. And I think he probably didn't choose the best way to help. And like I said, given his background and where he's come from and the cult he was raised in or the high control environment he was raised in, that I think plays a role on your mental health and your decisions to do these things. I don't think you have to be mentally ill to protest. But I do think there's something interesting where you decide to make your no-name death, you know what I mean, kind of like living history for a group of people that are suffering and they don't need more dead people, right? They need more living people to help. So I'm not sure if taking himself out was really one less person for Palestine or one more. Silver says he was protesting the genocide in Gaza, but he was also protesting the orders of the American government to the Air Force they received in November. He was protesting American participation. I could see that too, right? I could see that as well. That's definitely one form of protest. Like I said, I'm not a fan of this type of protest, but obviously, right? Like, I think you can live and die how you want. I don't necessarily think this says anything about him. It, it's hard for me to call him brave. But I also don't mind if you use that word for him if you feel like that's true, right? So it's just, how are you going to view it? How do you view it? You know what I mean? Marge says it's kind of messed up to say that I think he might have been unaliving and he protested and did in order to go out as a hero. Um, I think I think in this situation, we have to really like, so this is the problem. There's already judgment being cast. People have decided Israel is correct or Palestine is correct. So we're already throwing judgment. Why do you think one is correct and one isn't correct, right? Well, you have to take guesses. We're all making guesses all the time. What was he thinking? What is Israel thinking? What is Palestine thinking? Everyone has decided Israel is trying to G-side G Palestine, right? They've all decided that's what's happening. But we don't actually know if for a fact it is the actual thing that's happening or the political buzzword everyone's using to make things bigger than they are instead of just saying what it is alone is big enough, right? And then on top of that, we're all making guesses because as human beings, that's what we do as a collective. It is what we do in terms of groupthink to move things forward and to make things seem the way it is. And you know, my work is predicated on like the why and I want to know the literal truth, not the one that feels good to say out loud. Because it's true as a buzzword, I call it a G side too. But if I'm being literal, I, I don't know if that's actually accurate. I haven't done enough research to know if that's true because G side means a certain thing. But I do politically use it as a buzzword. But if you're being specific about language, then I think it's okay to guess whether or not he was unaliving mental health wise or if he was actually protesting with a consequence of allowing his death. So a soldier joins the military not to unalive themselves necessarily, but to fight a good fight and to die in the process in the name of their country. So you wouldn't call that unaliving the self, though you could, right? Now, again, from his family and friends, if we're talking about his family and friends, what they've said about him in the past, they have said that he tends to be an extremist. He tends to move back and forth between political ideologies. And then when he's, once he picks one, you know what I mean? Solomon says, um, aren't thousands of people dying daily in Palestine? Does it matter how it's called? I think it does matter because in, in some ways, again, if you're playing the political game, it matters. And if you're thinking about human to human, it matters. So again, some people call abortion a genocide. Oops, a G-side. Ooh, I'm going to get demonetized. Okay, so some people call abortion a G-side. Is that an accurate terminology, right? Some people call, um, like, again, that word G-side could mean something. So if you, if you want to be accurate, I think it matters. But also we have to remember that when everything is good, right? When everything is good, we personally have issues with people just on like what shows they watch. 
and who they're dating and what's happening in the world. So when war happens, we let go of all the privileged, you know, reasons we don't like people. We let that go and we focus on the bigger thing that we think is happening. And ultimately, that thing is where the nuance is. But ultimately, realistically, like humans being violent is a part of their nature. But we can also decide not to be violent. But that there might not be a, a way to do that in a way that makes sense. Right. So again, like I, I think I'm not in politics. I'm not a person who has a lot of wisdom on this subject. I'm just a person who talks about like what are we really, what is really happening, and and do we even know that? Can we even know what's really happening? Right. Um, and that's the dilemma. Is like we might not actually be able to own up to the fact that we do not we do not know what's actually happening. Right. So again, in my mind, what is happening in Palestine is unacceptable. I think what happens around the world is mostly unacceptable. I think most people having babies is unacceptable. I think most people living their own lives is probably unacceptable, but here we are. Because if you go to the extreme of all our, of our personal views, most of us find most people unacceptable. We just play this game where we pretend to accept people for who they are. But if you really asked yourself, who do I think is unacceptable? Anyone who usually thinks differently than you, to be honest. Or anyone that seems a little, because as much as we talk about loving diversity and loving uniqueness in people, we don't seem to do that as a species traditionally. And we tend to migrate towards people who are similar to us. So again, I, I am not saying that I have the wisdom to understand the complexity of the situation. But what I do know about humans as a species is violent is a part of our growth, evolutionarily speaking, um, socially speaking. And we do cause unjust wars. I mean, if you've been following anything that's been happening in Russia, obviously people walk every day into their death knowing they're going to die and the world sees it happen. And we just pretend like that's it because that is what's it. That is politics. So again, you know, if we're fed up with the world or humanity, we have to start with ourselves because that's the greatest chance you have of changing the world. But then again, the dream of changing the world is also one that is like, it's a, a, it's attached to outcome. And I practice an attachment to outcome and I accept the world for what it is. So again, you have to decide for yourself, what are you trying to do in your one limited life? You know, as a person who's Middle Eastern herself or like a Syrian, I always am amazed that my family decided to have children in the Middle East when they were in like a war and torn country. And there was like family members were being unalived and people were being, you know, taken to prison and all these things. But humans just have this thing where they want to make babies in war zones. They want to make babies under horrible situations. They want to continue the cycle of life and they want to go to war with people. The same, my same family that was in Iraq and was having Saddam murder his family or their family. Our family and friends, Saddam helped their family. So, so if you look at my family, some of us hate Saddam. Some of us love him because in one story, Saddam saved their mother. She was sick. In another story, Saddam killed their mother, his soldiers, you know? So even when I'm talking about my own family, we have a very complicated relationship. When 9-11 when happened and we went into Iraq, two of my brothers served. My uncles, my cousins all went into the military for the U.S. My parents were very pro going into Iraq. Now, all these years later, they sort of talk about not being pro going into Iraq, but only because now the conservatives have decided they regret that decision. Not because anyone's actually thinking, did I have a problem with that in the first place? So again, when we ask ourselves, do we even know why we're angry? Do we even know why we're upset? How much tragedy happens in the United States right in front of you or wherever you live, whatever country you're in, right in front of you, greater numbers than 30,000 and you do nothing? Yes, what is happening in Palestine is horrible. I can't do anything about that. What can I do in my direct neighborhoods? What can I do in my families? But that's a lot more responsibility than mourning for people you'll never meet. Because at least over there, all you can do is talk about it. But over here, now you're held to a higher standard of actually doing something about it, and you won't because it's incredibly difficult to help the world when the world does not want to help itself. And that is what's so complicated about the situation, right? So again, when we're having this conversation, you have to ask yourself, why do I feel the way I feel? You have to ask yourself that. Nobody else, because I can't read your mind, girl. So you got to ask yourself, wait, why am I upset? Like, why am I upset? 
Mar says, sounds like whataboutism. It's not whataboutism because I'm not talking about politics. I'm not saying, well, what about this? I'm saying, what about the reality of what you can do? So how much of it is false virtue signaling from the self, the ego, that says, look how much I care when you're not actually doing it? So, okay. So when you have, listen, you can use these like debate tactics or these political terms or these buzzwords, but that's not the real conversation. The real conversation is, what do you want to do about it? And why do you think the planet has an obligation to participating in this particular venture? Because I guarantee you, if you were born somewhere else with some other ideology, you'd also be on the other side of it. So then it's the question of biology and it's the question of recognizing you were born into bubbles. If you're born in Israel, you're going to have a, a, a bias towards that. If you're born in Palestine, you're going to have a bias towards that, right? Right. Colleen says the definition of compassion is to suffer with, not to suffer for. Exactly. Suffering with people is a universal like ability. It's not what aboutism. Because what aboutism is like a lack of acknowledgement that there's like, okay, what aboutism is like ignoring the main problem because, oh, I can't do anything about it. Right? I'm not asking you to give up. I'm saying, do we even know why you're upset in the first place? Because you can't get to the next step of success unless you know that right? You cannot do it. Solomon says it's more traumatic to see what humans are doing to other humans. And this is kind of on that first plan plan right now. Would you say protest can achieve anything? It depends. I heavily believe in the power of protest. I used to do protest activism and I think it really did help locally, but it didn't really help outside of that environment. And then how much you protest, right? That's going to be very dependent on your goals as an, as a group. So Again, there are like 20 layers to this and we can't even figure out which one we're focused on, right? And so that's why I say you have to know why you yourself feel the way you do. So I'm upset when like, I'm upset about all of it, but that doesn't help anyone, but I'm not an activist, so I don't need to have, I don't need to help anybody, right? Like that's what I believe. I can only help what I can help, but I'm upset about all of it. I was upset when I saw the videos out of Israel in October. I'm upset over the videos I've seen over Palestine. What does it matter if Britney's upset? What does it matter if, if you know what I mean? What does it matter if Britney's upset? Being upset isn't enough. It doesn't mean anything. It just means you're having an emotion in relation to your own ego, which is valid, but it's still about you. So what does being upset matter, Right. Marge says, what about him is dismissive, ignoring what she's saying is more self-aware and introspection is what you can actually do. Exactly. So again, being upset is a beautiful thing because you're having a relationship with yourself, but it doesn't actually mean anything for the people suffering. And again, if your goal is to help the people suffering, well, there are other avenues into doing that, right? But what are they is the next question. Um, Camille says, do you think lack of compassion for things happening elsewhere is entirely not no- natural or our governments, et cetera, actually weakening it. Um, Because as a kid, it was easier to feel intense emotions no matter what or where. Mm. Okay, so here's a dilemma. Neurodivergent people tend to have an incredible ability to be incredibly sad and empathetic for people they've never even met. I see this in myself all the time. And realistically, it is and seems to be very stupid, but very beautiful. It is insane. This is what I learned in therapy to mourn for a tragedy that's happening outside of you, it is almost borderline insane, right? So when I went to therapy, my therapist was like, you need to stop thinking you're going to save the world because it's unfair to the people that are suffering, but mostly it's unfair to you because they're suffering every day, everywhere. So again, because you're hyper-focused on the big suffering that's happening, you think that's what I need to consume my time with. But there's always suffering. So the question is, how do you decide who to care and when to care about who's suffering, right? And that's what's interesting. And that made me have to go, wait, why am I crying for the world? I don't know the world. The world doesn't care about me. And honestly, half the world being in charge would probably discriminate against me as like an LGBT person. So hold on, why, why, do, I, why do I cry at night for people I've never met? Why am I like self-harming because I'm so distraught over the world like around me? Why am I suffering for a world that just is suffering naturally. And it came down to the fact that I could not, like I needed to learn how to separate myself 
from everybody else in a healthy and realistic manner and then to focus my energy on what I could help instead of drowning myself in the like the suffering of humanity, right? And I think a big part of it was vanity. Like, oh, I bet if they could just listen to me. I bet if I just had the microphone. I bet if they just listened to me, they could change their minds. I get on here every day and I say, stop hurting each other. And half y'all go, "Mm, no, I'm going to still do it. I say, stop cheating on your partners. And you say, you're such a prude. I say, tell your partners honestly what you feel about them. And y'all are, you're crazy. I'm not going to, I'm going to be single forever if I'm honest with my partners. So I can't even get you to stop cheating on your partners. You think we're going to stop a genocide? (laughs) Y'all are optimistic as fuck. Y'all are optimistic as fuck. And I love that. So again, what is happening around the world is a tragedy. And again, my work is focused on what the individual can do. I cannot, I'm not in charge of politics. I don't want to be in politics. I don't want to get high ranked up in politics. Girl, I don't want to work for these governments and neither do you. So what can you do on your own? You can send out messages to people you know in the area. You can try to protest. You can try to, you know, advocate for aid to get sent into Palestine. You can vote differently. You can do so much more than the self-pitying party that people tend to have. You know, Mar says, should I only comment on what's happening in New York because I live here? Get real. Nope, I never said that. Why do you think I said that? It sounds like you're having a very like emotional reaction to this and I would love to sit in your feelings with you. Why do you think I said that? You can comment on anything you want. I'm not saying that. And I think you should pause and feel like and ask yourself, why do I think Brittany said that? I didn't say that. I'm having an opinion on Palestine right now and I don't live there. But I am not making it my burden. I am not pretending like I am suffering like the Palestinians are. I am not playing a game with you or lying to you and telling you my cushy ass in Europe is in any way impacted by this tragedy. It's not. Other than emotionally, the only impact I'm having with Israel and Palestine is a mourning for humanity because, again, once again, humans are going to human. But it is not impacting my life. My friends and family are okay. Everyone I know is basically fine. And the people that are being impacted, those are the people that deserve your attention. So I can help my family and friends. When the tragedy hit, I reached out to my Israeli friends and my Middle Eastern friends. And I said, does anybody need any support? Do you need to talk about this? What's up? Because that's what I can do. And the question is, what can you do, right? What can you do without making it consume your life and making it about you, right? And that's what's really, really important. That's the key. And I don't think people are taught to do that because they also feel guilty. I know for a fact a lot of people feel guilty not acting horrified over what's happening in the world, but only because it's popular right now. And you need to recognize that. But you won't because you're convinced. You're convinced that's not it. But I'm telling you in five to 10 years when the new tragedy hits and you're too tired to care because you have to afford eggs and eggs are $15, you'll get it. When your kids are sick and dying of cancer and a war breaks out somebody else, somewhere else and you can't, you don't have the energy, you'll remember. You'll realize, oh yeah, now I'm one of those people who are too busy worrying about my dying kid And all I can do is pray for the people around the world or whatever version of prayer you have in your life, you know? Mar says it's okay for you, but not for me. That's good. That means you have different values and you're adhering to those values. That's good. Why do you think you chose Palestine? Why do you think Palestine specifically, what what does it mean to you? Why Palestine and other, other tragedies? And again, I'm asking you introspection questions. I'm not asking you gotcha questions. I'm saying, do you know yourself well enough to, to know why you're connected to Palestine? You know what I mean? Why is it Palestine? What about it is standing out to you? Salomon says, um, the way it affects me is realizing that this is what humans are capable of and it can always come to the West too and our lives are subject to decisions of minority. Absolutely. Absolutely. My husband and I talk about it all the time. What if it happens here? What if we go to war here? What's going to happen? My parents lived through it. My brothers lived through it when they had to go over there, but my parents were in Iraq. Not during the Iraqi war, but my aunties and uncles were in Iraq during the time. People live through war. And just because you're not living through it now, you like could. And I think that's the question. And obviously, no matter what, it's horrible and a tragedy. It is. I think war is human beings um, at their at their least introspective, in my opinion. I think war is a complete. It's like we've reached any chance 
of being like higher thinkers. And now we've succumbed to violence. I do think violence is that way. But I think all violence is that way. I think fights in the street, fights against your partner. That's why I'm so against like toxic relationships. It's just so unhealthy. Who remembers Coney? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I was on the internet during that time. Mm hmm. Absolutely. You know. Um. OK. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, girl, as someone living in Russia, your words really do hit different. I wish I heard that two years ago. I feel you. What an interesting situation between Ukraine and Russia. And even when that happened, people were like, Brittany, pick a side, pick a side. But I had friends that were pro-Russia and friends that are pro-Ukraine. I'm devastated for the world. I in no way as a Brittany in the last 10 years have ever promoted war or the idea of war as anything more than political strategy. I think war as human beings being at their basically lowest because now that's what they've had to come to. It means you could not talk it out, right? War is political. It is not about humanity. So obviously what is happening in the Middle East is devastating, all, as are all forms of violence that occur in the world. All forms of violence, in my opinion, are human beings at their wits end. Even if you're fighting in a bar, why are you fighting at a bar? Why are you hitting your girlfriends? Why are you hitting your boyfriends? Why are we turning to violence? Why are you even hitting your kids, bro? Why are you hitting your kids? Why do we get to the point of violence as a species? It's the way we express ourselves when we're frustrated. It's the way we express ourselves when we don't have any other decision in our mind that's, you know, available to us. We've all probably done this in some capacity. How many of you have had a relationship with some form of violence? How many of you have spanked your kids? How many have spanked your dogs? How many ha of you have hit a partner? How many of you have had road rage? How many of you have honked at people and flipped them off? How many of you have had interactions with people? And now escalate that to a bigger part, which is war. So now we have weapons. Now we have politics. And now we have people who are trying to get territory, right? So again, like when we, when we take our everyday life and then we expand it out into people with power in numbers, war happens. And then what is happening in relation to war that makes it so like offensive to us, it's probably the magnitude. It's the magnitude in which we are experiencing it. And that magnitude, right? That magnitude is so disturbing. If you saw any of the videos of the Israelis being attacked in October, if you saw any of the videos of the Palestinians, it would and should devastate you. It should absolutely devastate you. I saw the most heartbreaking video, oh my God, of a Palestinian father screaming into the rubble for his children's voices and he could hear their voices and then after a few hours he stopped hearing them. I could never even imagine the pain this man must have been feeling to be screaming into a pile of rubble, hearing his children's voices only to lose the sound of their voice after hours or days or whatever it was. Just completely devastating to watch this man cry over the lives of his children. Just devastating. Just absolutely devastating. So again, there's no justification in my mind outside of politics, which is a different game. I don't care about that. From human to human, this is awful. We've already, now we've come, because politics is not human, guy. Politics is like the most corrupt version of humanity. Politics is about winning uh, Politics is not about your humanity. Say it with me. We just watched that man go back to Russia to get killed because of politics. Don't fucking talk to me about politics. If you care about people, don't talk to me about politics. Okay? This is a philosophy channel for that reason. Politics does not care about you. So again, if we're talking about human to human, what does it mean to be a person? Everything. All of this is humanity. All the violence and all the joy is all human. Every single part of it is a part of our evolution. Now, I think we're animals on a planet. I don't know what you think we're doing here. But I don't think there's a God girl. I think we're all just here doing our best. And this is what we've decided for the world. The world is a reflection of the collective as a whole. All of us as participants is why the world is the way it is. No one is exempt from why the world is the way it is. We are all participants in the world. Now, obviously, in smaller little bubbles, 
We impact our communities different, which is why we have diversity, which is why we have differing cultures, which is why we have different relationships with ourselves. So again, everything happening in the Middle East is without a doubt horrific, inappropriate, and just so human. So that brings us to Ethan Klein. How do we view Ethan Klein, who's married to an Israeli, who's family in Israel, who he himself is Jewish, who feels some way, obviously, about this particular tragedy for good and maybe bad reasons? Let's watch his initial commentary that pissed people off, and then we'll watch his rebuttal. So Thank you to the viewer who sent me this on Instagram. I really appreciate you reaching out. You sent me this two minute, 53 um, second clips of Ethan of what initially got him canceled this week. And then we're going to go over it. Remember that Ethan is a person. He does have family. He would be devastated if his kids were murdered or slaughtered. He absolutely is a person and we all have limited empathy. Every single person in this audience has limited empathy. You are not universally empathetic. So take yourself off that pedestal before I knock you out your ass. Boom! Or knock you onto your ass, okay? This idea that we are all universally empathetic is a lie you tell yourself so you don't feel like everybody else, so you think you're better than everybody else. Ethan is displaying a normal human expression. No matter how much you disagree with him, everything humans do is within their capabilities of doing it, okay? So let's see how he reacts to this, okay? Because again, Ethan obviously was impacted very greatly by the tragedy, okay? as was everyone else on every side. So again, I also don't believe in blame. So if you guys are going to play this like blame game, you can leave. I don't play blame games. I only play why is something happening. No blaming, okay? Why is something happening and how do we forgive? Ready? First reaction is this. It was absolutely insane how he like, Stood the whole time. That was crazy. I don't even know how that's humanly possible. So this is about Aaron Bushnell. He's giving his commentary on the, I think, second show he does. So I don't think this is like proper H3. So. um, Again, not to put this uncouth, but he's a champ at fucking burning a lot. I mean, and that sounds bad, but he did it really good. Does that bad sound bad? We have to make levity of things. Does that sound bad that he was really good? I mean, but I mean that in a, I mean that as a as a compliment. That's my that's my opinion on it. You know what I mean? I'm allowed to have a fucking opinion. I'm not saying the guy. I'm not saying anything about the guy. I mean, listen, I respect. I I, I respect what. Is that is that Aaron Bush? No, what is that? What is that? Wait, what the fuck is that? You hear that, Dan? Yeah, I don't know. I thought it was no. the soul of Aaron Bushnell coming to fucking <laughs> yell at oh, me. Oh, AB, it's your mic. Uh, you're looping back. I'm seeing it bounce. Can you mute yourself? It sounded like a demon filter. I think that. All right. Thank you, Dan. Dan button something. But do you see my point? You're with me, right, Dan? You didn't have to say what I said, but. Dan's with me. He buttoned the he did the button so that he could say off stream. He says, I agree with everything you're saying. I said, Thanks, man. It's nice Stop to hear that. It. Stop doing that. I says this, I really appreciate you having my back on this self immolation dialogue. That too. I want to honor that sacrifice. Monks do self immolation. Yeah, I know when they're like under tyrannical oppression by the Chinese and have literally no way for the voices to be heard. But I mean, the Palestinian cause is for sure uh, plenty talked about. Certainly. What? 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 Hello? Sorry, I'm reading chat. I didn't realize my mic. <laughs> what did you read? I'm just, I'm, I was reading on Twitter earlier something that I think that you agree with me that said that m mental illness can be present and moral goodness can also be present at the same time. And I think that that's just like, 
Okay, so, oops. So, okay, so that is the clip that I was sent. And then he goes on to the H3 podcast and he talks about it, but let's just talk about that. So a little out of context, the vibe is a little members only. It's like a very different vibe. Um, obviously, I agree with, um, what do I agree with? No, I don't agree with anything. Stop, scratch that. Scratch, scratch. Everyone's going to have a different opinion on what is proper protest, uh, whether levels of violence need to increase to make things different, whether peace is better protest. Protest is political. So again, like if you're protesting, this is like relation to political. If you're having a relationship with wanting to be heard and you don't know the best way to be heard, maybe you do something extreme. There's like so many things that play into this. Uh, whether or not he was mentally ill, I mean, aren't we all? But like also, maybe, but also, I'm not sure what that means. We don't know that, but sure. I think it, he's probably more mentally ill from being raised in like a cult, a high control area, and then going to the military. Um, but the only reason I say that is like, unless this type of protest is a part of your culture, so an expectation of behavior that can happen outside of mental health, doing that in a culture where that's not normal is sort of a sign of mental health, if that makes sense. Because if you do it in a culture, like I wonder why so many Buddhist monks did this, like in their form of protest. And I wonder if it was seen differently in that bubble, because humans really process like different actions differently based on the bubble. So I wonder if... Aaron had done a different form of protest if it would have been it would have made more sense to people because of course people are writing him off as like oh he's mentally ill but you can be like mentally ill and like have good a good moral compass but morals are also personal versus ethics or for society so there's like a multitude of layers that play into this right so again um if you think this is a proper form of protest I think that's fine I don't think anyone I personally don't think the world deserves your life In my opinion, I don't think the world deserves your life. I don't think the government deserves it. I don't think your fellow people deserve it. I don't think anyone deserves your life. I think you get to own your life and it should be yours and yours alone. And I think the idea that like you owe your life to people is incredibly inappropriate, but very common in culture. Uh, and so again, depending on how you want to have a relationship with things, you could think that your unaliving protest is what you owe to the world. I don't think the world is good enough for you to sacrifice your life for them. I just don't. I don't think your government's good enough. I don't think people are good enough. I don't think anyone has earned the right to have an agency over your life. Of course, if you would like to sacrifice your life for the people you love, I think that's valid. If you would like to sacrifice your life for your country, that's valid as long as it's coming from you. I don't believe in the draft. I don't believe in suicide bombers. I don't believe in anything that isn't coming directly from the person's desire. And I don't think the world owes is owed your life. But if, you know, he did this because he definitely 100% decided for himself he would do this, that's fine. But I don't think, I hope he knows that they, that, that they, that nobody, especially people who don't know you, they, you don't have to die for them, right? So again, you can have that relationship with it if you'd like. As long as it's coming directly from you, I'm okay with it. But if any way you think I have to do this because the world needs this, the world doesn't need you to die for it. The world is selfish and the world is self-focused as it should be because it's an animal species and they certainly are not going to value your life, whether you're dead or alive, in the way that you could, depending on how you want to value that life. So again, uh, it's not a matter of me agreeing or disagreeing with his form of protest, because ultimately it's his life. I only agree with it if he really wanted to do it. I disagree with it if he did it for people. I think doing these types of things for people, that's not a good enough reason. You know. So says, I don't think people talking about it or adding attention to it is worth a life. And the fact that it's already talked about, there's so many things you could do rather than that. Mm. Do we know he was raised in a cult? I read an article today. Um, let me see if I can just pull it up for you guys. He grew up in a religious compound in New Orleans, Massachusetts, where his parents, Dave and Danielle Bushnell, a longtime members of the community of 
for Jesus Church. Uh, this is uh, allegedly, let me see. This is the New York Post. Is the Post any good? Um, his parents continue to have strong ties to a murky religious sect, which has reportedly been a vocal online supporter of Israel's war on Gaza. The Church of Transfiguration is about 100 yards from Bushnell's home and its spire tower above their abode in the entire neighborhood. Let me see. Bushnell's mother, here. Bushnell's, where is it? I lost it. Mother Danielle, 57, has worked at the community's publishing arm. Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. Okay, his dad's an architect. Okay. Uh, CBS source says members have been publicly disciplined by being put in the middle of a circle as others scream, you are about you at you about something you did and make you feel like a worse person on earth. I to I definitely was repeatedly traumatized while I was there. Co-member Carrie says, okay. I don't know this community. I don't know this particular cult. So again, I don't know much about them, but from what I've been reading, and I don't know how much of it is ac accurate, he came from a very high controlled environment. Some would call it a cult. And he transferred that extremism into his activism. So that's from what I understand. Um, that's what I understand of it. Okay. I think that's interesting. There's something about that that stands out to me. But now with that said, um, I want to move on to Ethan now rebuttaling, talking about why are people mad at him on the H3 podcast. And this was from March 1st, 2004 or 2024. You know, what's funny is I really think if Ethan talked to me, I could get through to him and explain to him so much of what's going on. But also the thing is like when you're so strictly in the bubble, you're not going to do it. And the world is mostly in their bubbles and we're all in bubbles, all of us, even me. It's just my bubble is focused on like humanity and not on politics and war is related to politics. You know what I mean? So, okay, let's watch this video and see what we think about it. Hold on. Why are people mad at me? I want someone please to explain it. Explain why you're mad at me. Go ahead. I, I'm dying. Do you guys think we can make fun of suicide bombers? That's a question, too, I would ask. I think suicide bombers are probably like some of the saddest tragedies of humanity, since I know from my understanding, a lot of them are coerced into that position. And since a lot of them associate suicide bombers with like Muslims, like it is against the Quran to like unalive yourself. So obviously that's not like the crux of Islam, right? I think a lot of people in the West spread that narrative. And like, from my understanding, that's not true. Uh, what do you guys think about making fun of suicide bombers? Do you think it's appropriate, inappropriate? Do you think that Aaron Bushnell is an equivalent to a suicide bomber? Uh, or do you think he's more equivalent to like a Buddhist monk? Do you think he's like, what is he equivalent to? Are people mad? They're mad about my comments about Aaron Bushnell on the See You Next Tuesday. I, my point was this. I think you should be careful about how you romanticize suicide because it's going to encourage more people to do it. That was my take. Is that actually like suicide? Suicide to me is very different. So you guys know with my work, it is very different choosing to die versus like killing yourself because you feel like there's no other option. So for me, I don't consider what he did uh, a suicide unless it was a mental health related decision. Like he had no choice and he didn't know what to do. I also think because like if, if that's a suicide, then every soldier going into war is committing suicide by going into... A, a, a war zone where there's no chance of like them existing. Like it doesn't make sense. You know what I mean? So like calling, I, I think suicide is like a desperate feeling of like, there's no other option, but this option. And as somebody who struggled with suicidal ideations her whole life, like I know the difference between like, I feel like there's no other option and, oh, I'm willing to make a sacrifice. Like I, I would take a bullet for somebody. That's not suicide. Now setting yourself on fire can be in context just a matter of support, like not eating. Lots of Catholic people protest in the form of starvation. That's like their protest for aborted babies. So again, I, I think it's important to also, I, again, I think words matter and I think suicide is the wrong word unless it is, a, I'm okay with it possibly being suicide, but I think like we have to be careful with words just because I don't know if it was. I, I He definitely killed himself, but I don't know if he committed suicide. Does that make sense? And um, that apparently enraged people. Unless I'm misunderstanding. Tell me why. I'd love to know why. Because I feel like when people are angry. Because people are personally assuming this white man's death is 
it, say, shitting on this white man de- white man's death is shitting on Palestinian lives, which it's not. If you're making fun of Aaron Bushnell, you're more than likely to be pro-Israel, 100%. And if you're compassionate to him, you're more likely to be pro-Palestinian, which should ask you, like, which should force you to go, oh, shoot, am I being introspective? Do I actually have an actual opinion about this or am I pretending to? Because if your two sides automatically have a deviation in thought and there's not a lot of crossover, that means you are going with the herd, which is fine. Most people are part of tribes. We are sheep and we do like our communities. So again, if you automatically have empathy for for Bushnell, you're probably pro-Palestinian. If you're automatically making fun of him, you're probably pro-Israel. The fact that that's happening, the fact that the deviation is so fucking clear, the divide is so clear, tells me people aren't thinking. They're just doing. So then the question has to be, okay, how do I actually think or feel about it? Well, it depends on why. Why did it happen? Why did he do it? What's happening? What's going, you know, all of those things have to play a role. So Ethan is saying, why are people mad at me? It's because people are associating making fun of Bushnell as also mocking Palestine. That's why people are upset, in my opinion. Angry at me. They're looking uh, regarding this kind of stuff. They're looking for any reason. And so I feel like if you are actually articulated why you're mad at me, it wouldn't make any sense. So I'm dying. Please write it. What I saw because you made fun of him burning. Okay, dummy. I joke about all this shit every fucking day, and now all of a sudden you gotta get your get all bitched out. Like, give me a break, dude. I wasn't even insulting him. I said I was. It, it was the joke was that it was distasteful, and I was complimenting his resolve. Frankly, and the joke was that it was it was a compliment in a really distasteful way. That's my fucking humor. I do it here every day. And for I mean, it's especially on the members, <coughs> which is a little more <coughs> Girl, unfiltered. Ethan gone wild. Un- unfiltered by design. It's just kind of like Ethan is there. And no, but I would listen. I would say that joke on the podcast. Sure. And I joke but about, I, but if, especially on the members, you just kind of like shoot the shit. Just yeah, whatever, absolutely. But, it, but I, I, it's just it's really annoying that like people just. They stand by, like, just p- waiting for any reason to call me. And by the way. To be fair, um, people have biases. This is your prejudice as an animal on a planet. That's totally normal for a person to have those things. Ethan has it. I have it. You have it. None of us are exempt. You know, we all have things that we generalize or stereotype. We all have things we make exceptions for. I think I I have this thing on my channel where like there are certain things I mention and people just lose their shit. And I'm like, why are you so mad about this? And I would love to know that answer, but it's probably something related in how they identify with the story or they are. It's usually about identification. If people identify with the thing you're making fun of, they're more than likely to be more hurt than someone who doesn't identify. Often I find myself getting less offended at people because I almost never think they're talking about me. Like Tom Foolery is always ranting about how he's not going to be friends with women anymore. And I never think that's about me. Obviously, it's not about me. Like, why would he stop being friends with me? I'm fantastic. But like, also, I know what kind of woman he's talking about. And I agree with him. He probably shouldn't be friends with those women. (laughs) But that's the thing is like, he's not meaning women as a gender. He's specifically talking about like types of women, types of friendships, types of relationships. So I feel like the nuance in how people talk gets ignored because people can't imagine they're not talking about you. Even when I mention things about dysfunctional families or how we're all dysfunctional, people always assume it's about them in a way that I'm like, why would this be about you? I didn't even describe your family like unit, but people can't help it. It's about them, right? So again, I think Ethan is confused, but of course people are hearing it and making it about them. Ethan's making fun of Bushnell. He must be making fun of me. Ethan doesn't know you, girl. Hey, call me a Zionist. Make it about how I support genocide, about all this horrible fucking shit to call me racist. Why? Because I made one stupid, um, insensitive joke that, by the way, didn't call his character into question. It literally was just like, He's really, he was really good. And he was, my point was like his resolve was, was crazy. And the thing that, you know, um, really struck me about that video was how he stood there 
That um, was my first reaction. And I was like, wow, that I didn't I didn't even think that anybody could do that. So I mean, I don't know how to talk about that. I will say, just to speak on Ethan, and I mean this with peace and love, of course, like humans are gonna human and Ethan's no different from that. Ethan doesn't learn. So Ethan is stagnant in his ability to learn. He almost never changes. And this has been Ethan for the last, like, how many years, guys? Have we been making the same video about Ethan? And I, I think that's a really good example of somebody who just, like, doesn't change. And, of course, the people around him are also stagnant in their own unique ways. But that's also really, really common. You're stagnant, too. We all have places in our life where we don't always grow or exceed in. That's why I say, like, it is so difficult to be introspective. And, by the way, Ethan being introspective doesn't mean he'd be pro-Palestine right? That's not what introspection will get you. Saying you're pro-Palestine is like saying you're pro-Israel, depending on what side you're on. Now, you think it's different because in your head, there's like obviously somebody who's right or wrong, but that's your values that you formed over time through your genetics, your cultural background, and your education level to inform you of that decision. But again, depending on why you think you're on the planet, you didn't actually form that opinion probably um, out of an independence from the collective. You probably we're told to think that way or you feel like it's the right answer. But being pro-Palestine, when you probably just heard about it for the first time in your life, God bless you, you don't even know what that means. Do you mean you're pro the Palestinian government? What government? Do you mean you're pro the Palestinian people? Okay, what people? Do you mean you're pro, like you don't even know what it means. And then you assume if they say they're pro-Israel, they're pro an Israeli state, which means they're pro the destruction of Palestine. We're adding a lot onto what we think something means because of the bubble we're in. Not all words mean the same thing to all people. So all of your opinions are probably really, really valid. And they definitely are informed by what you know. But gun to your head without the internet at your disposal, what do you really know? Because I know very little, personally. And from what I've understood about people, so do they, including Ethan. So Ethan, even being perplexed that, perplexed that this is happening, is also his lack of curiosity and wondering why it keeps happening to him. He's the common denominator. But also, since Ethan's been doing this again and again with different kinds of tragedies, why do you think you're only mad at him now because it's about Palestine? Is it because you actually care about Palestine? So you're mad at Ethan for not caring? What about everything else Ethan's ever talked shit about that other people cared about? And you thought to yourself, oh, they're being so sensitive. Ethan's just making a joke. Okay, well, Ethan's just making a joke about, about Bushnell. But now that it has something to do with you, now you're upset. Right. And that's very human. And that's my point. We all do this, including Ethan. Ethan decides to be offended when it's about him. Star says, if we didn't have the Internet, I wouldn't even know what was happening. Nobody would know anything. And most of us don't even know this Bushnell story. I heard about it, but I only know more about it because you guys told me to look it up. Otherwise, I wouldn't have known about it. Some people just out here trying to pay their electricity bill. You know what I mean? But it, it, his resolve was incredible. And what I said was he's really good. Ari says Ethan keeps getting mad when people call him a Zionist, but he is one. So I don't understand the outrage. Is he a Zionist? What's a Zionist? What is a Zionist? What does that mean? At burning alive. And I mean that as, a, as the most sincere compliment possible. He and really it, is. And it's obviously also a really dark, like humoristic way to look. But then, so, so how are you going to take that and call me a racist, a genocidal, a monster? I mean... You, you, if you're coming at me with those kinds of takes, you are ensuring peace will never happen. Because you can't even have a, a fucking, ha you can't even have any kind of dialogue where everybody isn't walking totally aligned with you. I never said a single bad thing about that man. Other than the compliment, uh, uh, not even the compliment. Okay, so, uh, I don't know what you guys think Zionist means but I'm just going to use the dictionary. A political movement from for the establishment in support of a national homeland for Jews in Palestine, now concerned uh, chiefly with the development of modern state of Israel, a policy and a movement for Jews to return to Palestine. Okay. From the dysphoria. Okay. So, dysphoria. Dia, dia, support, disappoint. I don't want to say that word. So, do you guys feel like Ethan is a Zionist because he thinks Jews should have a homeland in, in Palestine? Is that, is that why we're calling him a Zionist? Is that correct? I just want to make sure we're on the same page. Uh, okay. Is that what we're calling him? I just want to make sure we're on the same page. 
Tori says, I definitely think there are layers of Zionism. Yeah, I feel like there's like light Zionists and extreme Zionists. Am I, I feel like that's accurate, but I could be very wrong. Um, okay, you guys are hearting the stream, so I think I got the definition correct. Ari says, my understanding is that Zionist is literally someone who just believes that Israel is the homeland of the Jewish people and that they have a right to be there. No. Yeah, it's that they have an, a right to have a place in Palestine and, and have a place there. Okay. Okay, yeah, that's an interesting decision. Um, Mantis says people take the issue of Zionists because of the links they'll supposedly go to establish said state. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Okay, I can definitely see why that's very upsetting to people without a doubt. That's a very, um, there's a very big conversation to be having over like, should states, governments, countries, cities, villages be very monolithic, right? Ari, thank you. Diaspora. Di diaspora. Okay, thank you. Diaspora. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, okay, so Ethan, then, okay, then that makes sense. Okay, let's keep going. Because it's weird to say, but his resolve is nuts. His resolve was really remarkable. That's what I said. And that's what the joke was. If you can't deal with it. Hannah says, Ethan says that calling him a Zionist is anti-Semitic. Let's think about that. Is calling someone a Zionist anti-Semitic? It's wanting to be a Zionist kind of nationalistic in a definitely probably bad way. Is it wrong to be a nationalist? Okay, let's think about that. Is it anti-Semitic to call someone a Zionist? Is it, to be a Zionist, does that make you uh, a racist? What's, what's, the, what's the accusation of being called a Zionist again? You are a, if you're a Zionist, you are, like, so if, 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 if Ethan is saying calling him a Zionist makes, is like calling him anti-Semitic, which doesn't make sense. Wait, how can he be anti-Semitic if he's a Zionist? Wait, what? Ethan says that calling him a Zionist, oh, he's anti-Semitic. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. So he thinks people are anti-Semitic, so they're calling him a Zionist. What would be the, what's the equivalent to that? So you're a Zionist, someone says. What are they saying about you? What are they saying about you? You know what I mean? And Natalie says, Ethan conflates Zionist with Jew. Tori says, he literally says calling him a Zionist is the same as calling him a Kessler. What? Okay, okay. Um, see, being Jewish doesn't make you a Zionist. Internet outreach is contagious. It's true. Okay, let me see. I believe not all, uh, I believe not because not all Zionists are Jewish and not all Jewish people are Zionists. Okay. Oh, is it xenophobia? Yeah, I'm trying to figure out what's the insult if you, somebody says like, March says I think Zionism is associated with privilege and racism. Okay, so if you're a Zionist, are you racist? Is that what the accusation is? Like, oh, Ethan's a Zionist. So Ethan's a racist? Is that literally what the insult? Because like to be called a Zionist, I don't know. This is difficult. Yeah. It, uh, Zionists believe they're the only ethnicity to belong to the Holy Land. Oh, that's a crazy take. That's a crazy take. No, that's a crazy take. Zionists believe they're the only ethnicity to belong to the Holy Land. That's a crazy take. That's crazy. Um, let's see. Leo says half my family is Jewish and they are all pro-Palestine. I believe that. Again, pro-Palestine is a funny, like, that's a political, political, eh, my brain's like, eh, that's a political thing. Um, okay. Fishy says calling him a Zionist is essentially calling him a nationalist, racist, someone who is pro-genocide. Okay. Okay. They believe only Jews belong there. Is that true? I mean, I know some Israelis and they don't feel that way. And then I know some people in the Middle East and they obviously have issues with Israel. So that's the problem. People in my life, obviously, I know some people who are like, again, I know everyone from everywhere. I know everybody. I'm just lucky that way. It seems very complicated, right? Let's see. The word Zionist has been used by anti-Semitic people to get around filters. It's picked up by local connotation. It's loaded connotation and people have the crazy definition of it. Obviously, some people who use the word Zionist are probably anti-Semitic. And then other people are just using, that's why words matter in bubbles, guys. Of course, no doubt, somebody saying you're a Zionist is probably anti-Semitism. And then somebody saying Zionist is just saying like, you want Z Jews to have a place in the Middle East. So, okay. Kay says he's responding to the internet's definition of Zionist, which involves the whole settlers narrative and calling Ethan someone that wants to destroy Palestine, Palestine and support the war. Okay, not the actual definition. Okay. Okay, so then it sounds like it definitely depends on like who's saying Zionist, where the insult is coming from. Okay. Whew. Then 
you know, you're a fucking hypocrite because I make these jokes about all different topics, about all different sensitive things, about all different groups of people, every fucking show. Yeah, we all pick and choose when we're going to make like spicy jokes, right? He tells Abin Preach not to joke about Olivia, but he can joke about Aaron Bushnell. Bubbles. And then when it lightly brushes on your shoulder, you freak the fuck out and you bitch and you cry and you go and you try to find any reason to, to, you know what I mean, to get angry. Give me a fucking break. Look in the mirror, loser. You're the problem. You are the problem. You are. I can't even have any. Nobody can have any nuanced conversation about this. Well, I mean, he wouldn't even build a bridge with Abra and Preach, so I don't want to hear Ethan talk about nuance. And this is what I love about people and bubbles, and we all have this. I love Ethan, but Ethan has no right to talk about nuance when he literally won't talk to Abin Preach. I know his crew has seen my videos. They certainly won't talk to me. I know he's seen other forms of content made about him. He doesn't want the nuance unless it's about him, which is very human. Ethan is no different from most people probably in this chat. Unless you're part of my core audience, then you guys get it. But if you're new to my audience, you probably do think nuance only matters when it comes to you. Which is why we only have it for us, but not for people we don't like. How many of you have nuance when it comes to people you don't like? Let's be honest. Probably not a lot. Marina with the super chat. Let's go. Thank you so much. I appreciate that so much. Okay. So again, I can't blame Ethan for not wanting nuance when it comes to other people because it seems to be pretty normal in terms of humans. But Ethan has no right to ask for nuance when he doesn't give it to other people. That's the problem. You know what I mean? So extreme. It really pisses me off. Because I never said a damn bad thing about that guy. And that's why I says, when you need to explain your reason for calling me a racist, calling me a genocidal, a Zionist. Okay, so Zionist is, uh, I get it. Which, by the way, Zionist is just another slur for Jew, being a Jew. You know how many people now calling fucking every... I definitely think that's probably true with some bubbles. Like, without a doubt. I have seen it used that way. So I think that's probably true in some bubbles. Jews a Zionist. It's like, okay, just call me a Jew and get it fucking over with. Call me the K word. At least I'll know what you mean. It's just the truth. Not everybody, not all the time, but a lot of times, let's not fucking pretend that anti-Semitism isn't a fucking massive inferno of acceptable behavior right now. On I think that's true. The left. I think that's true. I think people feel pretty confident being anti-Semitic. I would say that's probably pretty true. Um, yeah, I would say like a lot of the podcasts, a lot of the way people are talking about Jewish people now, I would say anti-Semitism seems really relaxed. But to be fair, in America, being anti-Arab, oh, that's just like so normal. It's so normal to be anti-Arab or anti-Muslim or to be absolutely, and don't get me wrong, as a secularist, I'm not a big fan of any of y'all religion, but in America and the West, oh my God, very common to be anti-Arab. Um, and to be pro-Jew, which is very interesting since, like, some would say Jews are Arabs. Like, it's a very interesting conversation. But it's really about the politics of who's going to shake whose hands and who's going to move forward culture and the way they want it to go. So, again, I uh, I think, like, we need to be more honest about that. But, yeah, I, I think, like, racism in general is just so human. Uh, tribalism is so human. Thinking, like, your people are safe and other people aren't safe. Like, all of this is just very human. You know what I mean? And the right. Nazis and leftists are dabbing the fuck up saying fuck Zionists, you know, and, you know, <clears throat> again, not to I got to It's driving me insane. I got to fucking talk about it. You know, I, nobody loves Ethan. Why are they letting him do this on the Internet? Ethan needs to talk to me. OK, Ethan needs to talk to me in private so I can explain it to him. But why doesn't anyone love Ethan? And why doesn't anyone? Ethan should not be on the Internet doing this. You know, I talked to my husband before I talk about things. I talked to him about this. I was like, do you think I have the like the understanding enough to have this conversation? Because I really feel like it's out of my depth. But I, I, I think I could talk to it. Maybe maybe I could comment on it. Like, I think it's pretty important. Now, I'm not always great. And I will yell at you in chat. If you play virtue signaling with me, I will decimate your opinion and call you a fake. But I, I did ask my husband, like, do you think I can like have this conversation um, because again, I want to make sure that I'm actually having it, I think in a way that's helpful, but Ethan, like he can't have the conversation and he doesn't know why. And I wish I could, I feel like no one in his world is smart enough to explain this to him, but I could, let me explain this to you again. 
I could explain this to everybody. And ultimately, we are all our like our worst enemy. In even in this, when you say you are pro Palestine, you are saying you're anti Israel. Do you know that? When you say you're pro Israel, you are saying you're anti Palestine. You're both wrong. Because if you are pro humanity, like pro people, anti war, period, like what are you doing? What are you doing? But you are pro war. You are okay if you're okay with what happened in October, right? To Israelis, then like violence begets violence. Like again, I think violence is human beings when they're at their lowest, right? So again, with peace and love, I really think if you're if you say you're anti-war, be anti-war. But if you're choosing pro-Palestine or pro-Israel, you are pro in some way violence against somebody. Same thing with pro-lifers who are pro uh death penalty. Like, how does that work? Or pro-lifers who are pro-war, like, how does that work? How does that work? You know what I mean? The pro-lifers who are actually pro-life are also anti-war and anti-death penalty. But you see how people pick and choose? People pick and choose, right? So again, I think what I would say for myself is like when I had to ask myself this and ask like, what do you really believe? I would say things change on context and it seems like morals aren't objective and it seems like we all have a relationship with what we're willing to justify because we think the ends justify the means. And I think that's a conversation you need to have with yourself and your God or whoever you worship or whatever compass of morality you follow. You know what I mean? I'm not going to sit here and pretend like there's just not a tidal wave of anti-Semitism gobbling up the entire discourse. It's fucking disgusting, man. And I'm, I'm doing, as, as an Israeli dual citizen, as someone who's deeply invested in the state of Israel, who's probably <coughs> more sympathetic to the Israeli perspective than most people sure. would be. Sure. I've tried so hard to pull myself to some kind of central ground where we can have a real conversation about this. No, he hasn't. Most people haven't. Most people, if you're, again, if you're pro-Palestine, pro-Israel, you haven't. Because again, it's not honest. You're not being honest. But you also might not have the tools to be more honest. If you're playing a politics game, you're going to want to side with the team, whether it's Israel or Palestine, that gets you closer to your goal in 50 to 100 years, which most of you are not thinking about. If you're playing humanity, what is good for humanity? Well, probably none of the violence in the Middle East. Not one single does not one single mode of action in the Middle East that was violent was accurate or appropriate. But here we are. And then again, if you really want to be honest, nobody cares what happened 100 years ago. This isn't the avatar. OK, I want to know what's happening now. So again, from anyone's perspective, it really depends on why you're upset or why you're choosing sides in the first place. And then if you are really like not even a part of any of it, and you're doing your own thing because you know this is just how humanity runs and you're in a cycle, you're probably just like less involved in general because no offense, there's nothing special about war. There's absolutely nothing universally special about suffering. You're not special because you suffer. You're just a person. All of the suffering of the world is part of that evolutionary process. You are just a blip in history. No one will remember you. No one will remember this. And even when they remember it, they'll remember it wrong because... We don't even have accurate depictions of history now. We can't even decide how the story of Israel and Palestine started. So again, if you're really thinking about this in a thousand years, nobody fucking cares. If you're thinking about this right now, right here, again, you have to ask yourself, why do you care? And why this particular tragedy? And why this particular sadness? Why this particular one? Why do you think this one is the one you care about, but you don't care about anything else happening? I'm not saying you shouldn't care. I think you should know why you care. Right. And I think that's kind of important, you know, but I don't think Ethan is able to have the nuanced conversation. And I don't think anyone really is. If you are definitely 100 percent not open to any ch any changing any of your minds are any of you who are pro-Palestine actually opening to hearing Israel's side and thinking they might be right. Is anyone who's pro-Israel actually thinking maybe Palestine has a point? Be honest with me. I'm your confessor. You can confess to me. Are any of you who are pro-Palestine actually open to hearing Israel might be right? Are any of you who are pro-Israel actually thinking Palestine might be right? And then you can take the other option, which is recognizing like it's not about being right or wrong, just about being human. 
because all violence is wrong. Violence is just wrong and only contextually justified in a moment over defense, which is very nuanced. Defense is very nuanced. You know? This stuff. I, I'm told myself all the way to, you know, outright saying that it's apartheid, that it's genocide, that the Israeli government is, is committing. And so, but you still want to call me a racist and a genocide and a Zionist. Why would you call me a Zionist if it wasn't just, oh, you're a fucking Jew? When I have said all the things that you want to hear from me, I want to meet you right in the fucking middle and you still spit in my face. So give me. You know why? Because he's not, he doesn't come off authentically understanding Palestinian side. And ultimately, without a doubt, he supports Israel. So when he virtue signals or plays to his audience as being sympathetic or empathetic to Palestine, it doesn't feel believable because he's ultimately pro-Israel, right? Is that the reason? And so you guys are waiting to see him like denounce Israel in a much more obvious way. You know what I mean? Natalie says, Ethan is about to be like, I've said what you wanted me to say, that there's a genocide. Show me shows he's just saying what he wants, uh, what he thinks we want to hear and he doesn't mean it. Exactly. So obviously it's going to be frustrating. So he doesn't understand that. He's not coming off as authentic. So of course people are upset and they think he's like a secret Zionist or whatever, or maybe like a not so secret Zionist, right? So you know what I mean? Yeah, I could see that. Give me a fucking break. Who's the problem? Scumbag. Scumbag. And I, you know what? I don't want to call out this because mm. I'm going to say this because it pissed me the fuck off. And being an anti-Semite. Oh Bro, nobody loves Ethan enough to take the mic away from him. Y'all hate this man. Y'all hate this man. Even his lovers hate him. Openly and proudly. What is Ela doing? You're pregnant. Get Stop talking about this. You obviously can't handle it. And you can't just say, because you come off too dishonest, just say what it is. She is now likes on Twitter. Frogan, oh she tweeted out, she goes, my Zion, I have a problem with my, uh, with my Zionist therapist. Just call him a fucking Jew. I'm sorry, but that, you can't talk like that about any other fucking minority. Look, without a doubt, and don't fuck with me. Muslims hate Jews. Jews hate Muslims. I don't know why we're all pretending this game isn't real. Not in all cases, but in certain bubbles. Yeah, guys, there's a lot of fucking racism and hate and like people hate each other, bro. I don't know why we're playing this game right now. Muslims tortured my family who are Christians, but also show kindness to other ones. Jews hate Muslims. Muslims hate like Jews and Jews hate Christians and Christians hate Jews and Jews and Jews and Jews. And Jews. Everybody just hates everybody. Okay. And then they like each other if they all want to have the same goal. You know how many Christians and Jews I know who say all Muslims are sleepers? You know how many Muslims I know that say no matter what, they're going to hate Israel? I don't know what the fuck you're all getting off about, but like everybody be hating everybody. Okay? Like, I don't know why we're pretending that's not true. Like, I love how everybody keeps like trying to pretend like, oh no, but we love everybody. Girl, I've seen the way y'all have fought for hundreds of years. Shut the fuck up. Already. I had a problem with my Zionist therapist. What you taught your Zionist therapist? Did you get that those level of details from them? You 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 had an in-depth conversation about the politics of Zionism with your therapist? No, I know what you mean. You mean fucking Jew. You know, I'm not going to sit here and be... I read that tweet. There's a tweet from a Muslim woman who said she went to her uh, therapist. And the therapist, she was talking about her tragedy with Palestine. And the therapist said, does it matter that I'm a Jew? And she goes, I can't believe she asked me that. But like, why wouldn't she ask you that? She's saying, are you comfortable with the fact that I'm connected to the people that have oppressed yours? It's a really good question to ask. So the fact that she thought like that was inappropriate, just like, yeah, you don't like Jews, bro. And they don't like Muslims and you guys all hate each other. But also I get that because like you have all of this history, all of this animos anima animosity. You have all of this racism. You have all of this like fucking xenophobia. You have all of this. Like, humans are so human, bro. They're so tribal. You know what I mean? So I don't know. Okay, hold on. You guys, let me go to Twitter. Because I remember seeing the twit from Frogan. That's her name, right? Frogan. She's a very outspoken activist, right? Hold on. Let's look up the tweet, bro. So we're like on the same page, huh? I want to take her out of context or nothing. Okay, let's see. What is it? How do I find it? How do I find it? Hello, Frogan. Okay, let's see. Um. Okay. <clears throat> 
So here's the tweet. It says, I just went to therapy. This is Frogan. I just went to therapy for the first time. And after talking about my dad fleeing the Israel, Israel, Lebanon war, she's like, I'm Israeli. Do you have any issues with me being your therapist? Bruh, I was taken aback. Why? 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 That's, uh, see, I don't understand the tweet already. Can someone explain it to me? That's Frogan Hassan's mod. Oh, okay, okay. I didn't know that. Okay, so like what, why was she taken aback? I feel like that's a really compassionate answer or question to ask. She's saying, hey, are you in any way like upset with the fact that I'm like your therapist Um, because, you know, I'm Israeli? And she, like, what do you mean I was taken aback? My mom told me to switch because that wasn't professional. What are your thoughts? Because I'm genuinely so conflicted. That is the most professional. That is like the most professional. Am I missing something? Is this the whole context? I'm Israeli. Do you have any issues with me being your therapist? Bra, I was taken aback. My mom says it was unprofessional. I'm missing something. I must be missing something. Uh... There's another tweet after Ethan went off on her. Okay, because I don't know what that means. I must be missing. I feel like I'm missing context. Um. Okay. When I say my therapist was a Zionist, when I went back to her, and I, went back to her in 2019, I mean she literally brought up the fact that I was Lebanese. I'm prompted and confronted me on it, saying she was Israeli. I don't know if I believe her. She sounds traumatized. That's why she's in therapy. She asked if I had a problem with that. If I felt like Israel. Israel had the right to exist. Oh, well, that feels unprofessional. Started asking more and more if I was frustrated with Islam and have considered taking off my hijab. Oof. Oof, girl. <laughs> That's unprofessional. I asked her if she was all right with me being a Lebanese and she got really aggressive, accusing me of flipping it on her and refused to answer. Jesus. So when I say Zionist, I don't mean she was Jewish. I mean, she was a racial, she was a racist Israeli who would not help, who couldn't, wait, who could not help herself but to confront me about my ethnicity and what was supposed to be a therapy session. Jesus. Well, obviously, none of that's okay. That's fucked up. That's really fucked up. Okay, that's fucked, that's fucked up. Okay, obviously, pr let's pro Frogan, Frogan on that. Frogan? Okay, obviously, that's fucked up. You can't do that, right? Okay, do we agree? Like, that's pretty fucked up? I don't know the context in terms of the tone, but it, with all of that, like therapists or people, they can get fucking triggered too. So, okay, then that's inappropriate, right? Do we agree on that's super inappropriate? Okay, so, okay, let's, let's, apparently he's going to talk about it more. Let my fucking people, you know, be openly bigoted and racist. Fuck that shit. Nobody would expect that from any other minority. Nobody. It's disgusting. It is. And I'm here. I'm with you. I'm on your side all the fucking way. I'm on your side as much as I possibly can be. And instead of, you know, holding hands and having a real conversation, you spit my fucking face and you call me a Zionist. Fuck that shit. Fuck that. People get angry about what I said. That pisses me off. It's just... He needs to talk about this in therapy. He needs to talk about this in a support group. He's very, it's very, it's very real. Guys, none of us want to be fucking known as like murdering fucking people. None of us are out here trying to murder your people. Not you, not me, not Ethan. Nobody here is thinking, oh yes, I can't wait to see Israelis die or Palestinians. Well, at least not in this bubble. Obviously there are bubbles where they're very pro that, okay? But in this particular conversation, you, me, him, I don't think Ethan wants the murdering of Palestinian children. And I also don't think he wants the murdering of Jewish children or Israeli kids, okay? So I think he's like so in his trauma about it, which is fair. If Palestinians are traumatized, I don't know why Ethan wouldn't be. Or also anyone who's like never faced that kind of reality in their life, it can be traumatizing. So I kind of feel like Ethan needs to be talking to it there. I This makes me feel this way, he says. For sure. He should talk to Dr. Kirkonda. He needs to go to a therapy session. Dr. K, he needs to have a relationship with somebody who can let him vent and then explain to him why people are having a relationship with him that he's ha that they're having. You know what I mean? So again, I don't think Ethan owes allegiance to Palestine. I think that's really fucking weird, right? But I also think he can come to a position where I feel like he could say, I understand why people are upset with me. It's a really devastating situation, but also, you know what I mean? Like, there's a thing he's missing. There's a disconnect in the way that he's talking. Now, you might feel the same way about me. Maybe I'm having a disconnect. But to be honest with you, like, we're all just being people, guys. 
expecting people to be more than they are, I think is so human, but so inappropriate. You know what I mean? So again, what is Ethan capable of? Because in the past it showed he's not capable of much. It's not like Ethan's a deep thinker. Like, no offense. You know what I mean? I don't think Ethan has shown himself to be a person who grows. So like, to be fair, you know what I mean? But obviously, if he can understand it from like a humanitarian perspective, like has he watched the videos of Palestinian suffering? I think that might help because it's pretty fucking devastating. But also maybe politically he's still pro-Israel because it's in his best benefit, which I think is within reason. It is within reason to be politically within your best interest. But also it's within reason to say, fuck politics. I'm just pro-human. Obviously, it's within reason to say I'm pro-Palestine if it's politically more pro-you. That makes sense. Like everything could be within reason because it's within what you know, right? And it's with the relationship you're having with people, you know? Tori says, I don't think Ethan should talk about this publicly at all. It's obviously hard for him to see it from a different perspective and doing this is going to really dig him deep, which obviously also shows how, how compassionate or like suffering of a person he is. He just doesn't have the empathy with all people, but he's obviously like devastated by being viewed this way because it's not how he sees himself. But is it, you know, is it a, that's the thing. It's like, he needs like a therapist who can ask him, why do you think you're so devastated that you feel this way? What is that like? You know what I mean? Um, what relationship are you having with it? You know, um, Star says, I can't imagine my therapist acting in such a stupid, unprofessional way. Oh my gosh, guys, the stories I have about bad therapists, not me, only one therapist was bad for me, but like, oh my gosh, like girl, girl. It is intense. Now, I'll tell you, I'll tell you this. The reason I say humans are going to human, and that's a sentence that I use on my channel a lot, is to express that, again, everything you're doing is within your, like, biology. Again, if you think you're from a god, like a god put you on earth, like, you probably, you probably don't want to watch my channel. Right? Think about it. Think about how different our realities are. And right now, we're looking at a religious and political war. Ultimately, whether you like it or not, this is a religious and political war. We're dealing with people that think God has a relationship with them. So we need to be aware of that. And then there's the secular parts of the communities as well, which is political. See, the secular part is majorly political. The religious part is the foundation, but also a part of the, the people's culture on both sides. So again, when we're having this conversation... You have to decide like, okay, what side are you inclined to be naturally? Why are you there? Which side would you be on if you were thinking it through? And then is there even a side to be on realistically? You know what I mean? Let's see. It's, it's fucking absurd. Think about poor um, <laughs> Shetty. We've been making so much fun of the guy. Until now, we didn't even have a reason to. Like now at least there is a reason. But the poor guy, there's been a war. <laughs> Excuse me. There's been a war for no reason with the guy. Nobody's defending Jason. We're calling that's his eye collar fake. Yeah. And but, that's okay. No, but I make fun <laughs> but, of all different like, groups of people. And the thing is, again, if you look that, at my joke, my joke wasn't like, oh, look at this idiot. What a fucking no, idiot dying not. for a dumb cause. That wasn't what I said at I, all. I don't the, think people were upset with the joke. I think it was that I what I saw some people saying is that you were looking at it from like an all lives matter type you by, what did i say that was all lives matter by ignoring uh, i'll say it right here all lives don't matter only the ones you decide matter do <laughs> it's true though huh none of us believe all lives matter not not any of us sitting in this room think all lives matter it's a it's a it's a that's why it doesn't matter when people say all lives matter like no no, no lives matter. It's in neutral. Neutral. Life is just like life and death is the cycle of life and death. Like all lives matter. Mm. Nobody believes that. Nobody believes. Nobody. Nobody's ever believed that since nobody believes that. That's not a real thing. It's not true. Uh, what his cause was rather than. How did uh, I ignore his cause? 
Well, I'm just giving you what they were saying. Well, I just want to know because people keep trying because to... See, you're... he says he wants to know, but he's combative with AB, who has a connection to Muslims, probably has no knows people in Palestine, or at least Jordan or somewhere. You know what I mean? Iraq, something. Okay? So, like, mm, he's not letting him speak. Because hey, Talk, you're talking about suicide. <laughs> Yeah, and I said suicide isn't good, and people right. shouldn't clamor. Yeah, you. and they were upset that you. And were by the way, let me clarify: if it seems like I'm angry genocide. at AB, I'm not. Mm -hmm. I'm fired up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love AB, yes. and I appreciate that you're because I'm I'm desperate to understand the perspective. So I appreciate that you're conveying it to me. So go ahead, please. Yeah, no, that that's it. Just that you were focusing on the suicide aspect <laughs> rather than the genocide. Well, yeah, the reason for that being is that that was the part that you know. Again, I've gone out and I've said that everything y'all want to hear. Oh. Um, Ethan! Does nobody love this man to tell him, like, what are you saying out loud? Listen to him. Guys, I already said what you wanted me to hear. Why are you mad at me? I already said it. Like, Ethan, uh, why do people let this man talk? E <sighs> what? About there being a genocide and apartheid and the fucking warmongering Israeli government and all that fucking shit, okay? What I'm seeing on social media. I do think I agree with this. Um, Exurbitage. My issue was Ethan doubling down and calling it a suicide. Like by definition, sure. But to call this extreme protest suicide alone disregards the reason for the protest. I don't even know if it's a suicide. I think a suicide is a feeling trapped sensation that leads you to killing yourself because you think there's no other options. So I don't even consider killing yourself automatically a suicide in my opinion. Because again, people volunteer their life all the time for lots of reasons i don't think that's necessarily like so okay the thing is is like we don't know if it was a form of protest or a suicide but automatically painting it as a mental health suicide and not a not a thought through done with conviction sign of protest is a deliberate twisting of the story we don't know we should think more than a suicide it is most likely just a thought through protest but we don't actually know that right because we don't know the inner workings of this man's brain or what led up to this decision in every explicit detail but i would say that it's more likely given his last words and the way that he presented himself you know what i mean like okay why do people say suicide bomber it's just the way people talk what they really mean is like um uh it's just like it's a bubble thing. So, yeah, I think that's correct. Like people use the word suicide bomber. I feel like and even I use it because that's like the term, you know what I'm talking about. But like we could reframe it. Right. So, again, like. Bleh, you know what I mean? Did you read what Aaron said before doing it? Yeah. Like the free Palestine or whatever. Yeah. 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 That doesn't change it, though, because he could actually be going through like a schizophrenic break and still doing it or because we don't know. Again, I'm, I'm sorry. This is minor divergency. We need to be very specific like again we can't read minds so it is more likely based off the evidence that he was doing a protest and that he wasn't mentally ill and committing suicide in the way that these people are saying and that's why ethan is getting criticized because ethan is downplaying and saying that it is you know what i mean cognitive dissonance says he wanted to commit suicide and he wanted to make a statement and then the two collided Ugh, how useless you can clip it that is so useless. If he wanted to die already and then he wanted to make a statement, it's even more useless. It is better for him to have just made a statement. Well, you can't you can't have both. Like because if you have both, then that's it doesn't make any sense. Like it doesn't make any sense. That's why the protest doesn't matter then. Like you didn't even do anything brave then. You were going to die anyways. Like if you were going to die anyways, it's not brave to die with like a shout out to the world. Nobody knows who you are. It's just a bad political move. The strategy politically is just not useful, right? It only reinforces, like you only, it only reinforces the Palestinian side, but not the Israelis changing their minds. You are talking about it. Yeah, we are talking about it, but I'm not going to change my life. Like he didn't impact me. Talking about it is fine, but like, does it impact change? That's the point of protest. Does it impact change? And his, his decision to kill himself is like literally not going to change how I live my life. Or how most people live their life. K says Ethan is taking away his agency without evidence. Exactly. That he wasn't acting within his agency when he made the choice. Exactly. Star says I don't say how just calling it suicide is downplaying it. Well, because then you're saying he didn't. It's a performance. If Okay. Again. 
are you committing suicide because you're mentally ill and like you think there's no point in living? Well, then why should Palestinians want to live if you don't want to live? If the guy who wants to stop Palestinian death also wanted to die, then obviously life doesn't matter. Which I would agree with to some extent, right? Telling Palestinians or telling people they should value Palestinian life while also saying I wanted to die is saying you don't value life. And it's like saying let's like support like life by murdering a bunch of people. It doesn't make sense. I don't get it. You know what I mean? It doesn't it doesn't compute in my brain. Media is not people saying it's not about genocide or whatever. What I'm seeing is tons of people glamorizing, romanticizing a man taking his own life. And I thought that was dangerous. That's a dang Yeah, but that's really normal. We do that all the time. You know what I mean? We do that with war. Young men are signed up for the military and forced to die and kill Iraqi children and Palestinian children. Like... Everything is kind of we we downplay everything. We downplay murder and genocide and rape. We downplay everything. We downplay suffering every day. We downplay cheating. We downplay lying. We downplay everything. Because I just don't think humans on mass care in the way they think they care. I think they care in a way, but not the way they think they care. Dangerous thing to skirt down. That's all. You know what I mean? Yeah. Didn't it's say just, a bad thing about the guy. It just feels wrong to, um, <coughs> like Ethan said, to glamorize something like that because that's just a dangerous idea. That's my point. And I feel like that's a converse. That's at least, even if you disagree, a good place to have a conversation. And it's not really about what he was protesting at all. Again, I complimented his resolve as a, as a person, you know what I mean? But it, that's my problem is that people, they're watching with the expectation, they're looking for any little nugget of, to, to get in, you know, indignant over and to call me a Zionist. Mm -hmm. DeFreak says, why not gather evidence as an insider and fight the cause? This action was rooted in insanity. Again, I don't know if he was insane, um, but if he was, it probably started from the cult he grew up in. Right. So I think that's kind of important. Ari says there's a difference between execution and martyrdom and the difference between getting shot and assassinated. Words mean things. I agree. I would love to know exactly what happened, you know, like exactly what happened, because I do think words mean something different. So I think Ethan, he has to understand, like continually calling it suicide, glorifying suicide. First of all, we do that already in society, but also him saying it that way, he's making it he is making it not a political protest. Now, if he did want to commit suicide and do political protests, I think those two things can exist at once, but then his message is meaningless. Why care about Palestinian lives when you don't even care about your own? Like, the hypocrisy is annoying. Nobody likes a hypocrite. So, mm, you know, did we go over his past just a little bit? I read a little bit and showed a little bit from his family and friends. Um, he was born in a really restrictive, like Christian cult, high control environment, went to the military and so far and so on. Did you see the video? I actually did not watch the video. Uh, I might watch it on my own later tonight. Uh, I've seen videos that are similar. Um, growing up as a kid, my family was very much like, you need to see what Saddam did to us. So we've, I've seen people gassed. I've seen people beheaded. I've seen all those videos. Like I grew up in a really, uh, connected to war environment you know even though i was never in war because i'm a spoiled californian but you know if you call me a zionist you're anti-semite you know why because i'm not a fucking zionist and i've made that exactly profoundly deeply deeply clear so when you see someone on okay uh natalie says it was about what he was protesting that's the whole reason he said he d he did it why are we ignoring that so you know in the same way we're listening to ethan and we don't fully believe him it's the same way i don't fully believe bushnell I don't fully believe anybody. I don't even fully believe Frogan. I don't believe, fully believe anybody because people don't know themselves well enough to know why they do anything. So you know how Ethan's talking and we don't fully believe him when he's like, why are you mad at me? It's the same way with Bushnell. We're looking at him and we're like, something doesn't feel fully authentic here because we've seen protests in the past. We have seen people do this in the past. And it seems like, okay, like for the most part, we're like, okay, I can see how you got there or maybe not. But something about Bushnell feels suspicious, just like Ethan feels suspicious. 
Because when he talks, you're like listening to him and you're like, something's off. Like, I don't believe you. So they like, we don't, there's something with Bushnell that's giving people the same feeling, you know, but also again, your bias is playing into this. If you quickly decided what side or how you felt about Bushnell, that's your bias. And then you have to ask yourself, why do I have it? Is it good or bad? Right. And making fun of him, like it's one thing to do it in private or whatever, because, I, you know, you make fun of anybody. But it's another thing to like literally make fun of him. I think that's a really weird take. If you think it's suicide, why are you making fun of him? If you think it's a protest, why are you making fun of him in public? Right. Like as a statement. That's weird. On Twitter, when you see someone in the audience calling me a Zionist, what they're calling me is a fucking Jew. Because mm -hmm. that's the only goddamn thing that means at that point. Right. And I feel like anyone who's a fan of you should know, like, how you talk. Like, they shouldn't, like, I don't know how it's not clear that <coughs> that's not what you were saying. Um, that, that you, you know, from the joke aspect, too, that you're just making a joke, but. I yeah. mean, that Maybe. video is shocking and mind-blowing. and Yeah, it is. Yeah. It, it, it brings a reaction out of you. So it's not that weird to comment about. The video. I, I, I see people saying this too. No one is glamorizing it. Dude, I don't know what your world you're living in. I, if, if you don't see that, I don't know what to say. Like people are literally glamorizing. I think we just glamorize everything or downplay everything. I just, you know what I mean? Yeah. I've seen images of him <laughs> on fire being like free Palestine. And they're, they're turning him into a cultural. Um, they're trying to turn him into a cultural icon. And whether you agree with that or not, you know, and not to comment on his cause, which is. OK, so that's that's where Ethan's not understanding. Right. I said, again, is just and I understand and his resolve is incredible. But I do think that, you know. Ignore trying to ignore the fact that the man killed himself and that there's probably not some mental health issues at play here. OK, so now we see why why people are really angry. Ah, this is Ethan's bias showing is remarkably, remarkably, um, what's the word? It's like um, reactionary. Mm, okay. Okay, so with that sentence, the way he phrased it, so he downplayed it. Why are we glorifying it? Meaning, why are we even saying he was brave? Why are we saying anything good about him? Why are you saying he's a protester? By calling him a protester, you're glorifying it. Versus saying it was suicide, now you're sad about it. Like, oh, this is a bummer. Okay, so Ethan's already made a decision that it's not just a protest. Versus I think it's it could be a protest or it could be mental health or it could be both. I don't know. I don't have all the facts and I didn't see the video. So, okay. So Ethan's, that's, that's why people are upset, right? A uh, Japanese businessman says, if you think it's suicide, but you also hold the value that all life is sacred, I don't think it's against someone's value to make fun of his suicide. I don't think it's against someone's value to make fun of his suicide. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Right. That makes sense. OK. Um, I could see. So, yeah, Ethan. Isn't treating him like a protester. So he's not he's not allowing an op he doesn't believe no matter what, he doesn't believe it was um, It was like a protest. He's saying, why should we glorify a protest? Is it like a suicide bomber? Should we glorify suicide bombers? Should we glorify people sacrificing? I mean, we glorify soldiers defending countries. We glorify people having to kill other people for their country. We glorify protesters who try... But then should we glorify these things? We probably shouldn't be glorifying any form of violence. But I also don't think we're anywhere near being able to do that, like, as a species. Like, it makes no sense. Um, I just don't think we're anywhere near that ability to to even consider um, not glorifying violence. Like, ev ev this just doesn't make any sense. Like, humans aren't even close to that yet. Okay, hold on. Is this the video? Okay, I got to see his face. I, I keep hearing his voice, but I need to see his face to see if I think this is an act of protest or mental health. And the reason I say that is I've seen a lot of monks do it. I've seen a lot of other people do it. It's a very interesting, like, human experience to watch people, like, die for a cause or starve themselves for a cause. There's a lot of peace and a lot of, like, stillness to it.
and I want to see by the video audit by the audio. Uh, it doesn't sound. It doesn't sound uh that like that. Hold on. Um. Yaya says Aaron didn't hurt anyone else unless you count the people that heard and saw what he did. That's scarring, but equating it to suicide bombing and war isn't the best. Um, he didn't take anyone with him. Okay, that's a good example. Or that's a good distinction between the differences. Is like one takes people with them and one doesn't. Okay, that's a good distinction. Um, I think that's a fair, uh, yeah, I think that's fair. Why does it affect him uh, that much to begin with? Well, I think that's the question too is why did he find that the conflict was impacting him that much? That's what's interesting. Again, I don't feel very strongly towards it in particular. Japanese businessman says, do we think if a country like Japan didn't glorify kamikaze pilots, would that make Japanese people less likely to do that during World War II? Or suicide bombers, same question. Um, yeah, it's hard to say. You know, I don't know. I think a lot, I'm going to say this, and this is probably not... I think a lot of religious people also have a lot of um, martyrdom porn habits. They just love the sacrifice. You know what I mean? A lot of people in a lot of bubbles just love the whole like I sacrificed to myself. I did this thing to myself self that I think uh, I don't really value in people if I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, one conversation that comes up often in my bubble is like ecotopic pregnancies, how women who die for their unborn fetuses is like hugely respected. And if they in any way abort that baby, that's like the worst thing they can do. And I just don't value that. Like I don't value dying for your fetus. But if you want to do that, you can do it. Especially not for an ectopic pregnancy. But in the bubble I grew up in, uh, my family and friends like who are religious, they like think it's like, wow, that's like amazing. You died for your unborn fetus. And I just don't have that. So I think some people have it. I don't. I don't think protesting and killing yourself because of a war happening in the Middle East is. I just don't. I you you feel like a mom who has an ectopic pregnancy that won't abort the baby. Like I just don't know what you're doing. But if you you know, I think you have the right to live and die how you want as well. So if you want to die for that reason, I think that's fine. I just I'm not going to be able to like. Oh yeah, I totally would do that. Like I wouldn't do any of that. You know what I mean? Um. What, Kay, you just found it? Send it to me on Discord. <laughs> Send it to me on Discord, bro. Somebody send me a link on Discord. Somebody help me out. One of you internet fucking professionals, send it to me on Discord. You know, so Aurora says there are people who have fantasies about dying for the greater cause. Yeah, I think people have like a hard on over wanting to die, you know, for the greater cause. It's like the third video from the result. What? Why didn't I find it that easy? On Twitter? What the fuck? Is my Twitter broken? Hold on. Let me turn off the just the sounds. So my concern is that my concern is like, do you have a hard on for being a, a martyr? Because I just don't think that's cute. But like it's been incredibly glorified most of my life growing up in religious bubbles. Like, oh, my God, look how amazing I am. Blah, blah, blah. Um, This isn't the video. OK. I'm not seeing it. None of, my, none of my videos have it. None of these. Do I have like a sensor on that won't let me find it? How do you all find something so fast? Why can't I find it? Hold on. Okay. Hold on. Someone sent it to me. Okay. I'll watch it. Oh, Lord. Okay, so already he said, hold on, let me repeat it. I'm about to engage in an extreme act of protest, but compared to what people have been experiencing in Palestine, it's not that extreme. That's kind of insane, right? Okay. It's not extreme at all at the hands of the colonizers. Okay. Okay. This is what our ruling class have decided it will be normal. Okay. Okay, so he puts the phone down. He grabs something out of his pocket. His hat, okay. 
he pours himself with oil or fluid. There he goes. Oh, shit. He's about to fucking just do it. He started on his legs. Oh, Lord. Okay, it's not lighting. Oh, it's censored. He's on fire. He's screaming, free Palestine, free Palestine, free Palestine. He's screaming in pain. He's screaming in pain. Free Palestine, he's screaming in pain. Okay, sirens start right away. He's coming up. Okay, he's on the floor. People are shocked. I don't need guns. I need a fire extinguisher. Okay. Huh. Hmm. 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 I'm not very moved by it personally. I don't feel myself very moved by it. Um. I think I was much more moved by the Palestinian videos, obviously, of kids and men and women in Palestine, obviously. That's what makes me want the ceasefire. Like, that's what makes me want to help Palestinians is, like, the videos of them suffering. This didn't give me that same feeling. I also felt very angry for Israel when I was watching October 7th videos as well. Um, I did feel very upset for Israel, like, at that time. I feel much I feel very upset for Palestine now, obviously, because they're the ones being impacted the hardest. Um, how do I feel about Aaron? Um, how do I feel about it? Um, seems really silly. Like, very naive. You know? I watched it on sound. Yeah, yeah. It says you got to watch it with sound. I did watch it with sound, guys. Obviously, I had to mute it for you guys. But I watched it on sound. Um, Just feels very immature. It has, like, no wisdom to it. There's, like, nothing wise about it. Um, And things that lack wisdom feel like the wrong decision. Hmm. Is there any wisdom in this? I often feel like passion and wisdom do not go together. And I often feel like passion blinds us from wisdom. You know? Hmm. Yeah. I, I'm not very sad when people randomly die, obviously. Like, someone's dying right now. Someone's being graped right now. So, obviously, I can't just, like, pretend to be sad. I'm not very sad watching just anyone die because like lots of people die for reasons that I think are just so silly um but at the same time do I feel moved by this yeah no I don't think so Shay says wait Brittany are you saying that people shouldn't be dying for the world because Ethan was saying this shouldn't be glorified sounds the same. It's not even the same. It's like you kind of saying what Ethan's saying. I'm not even saying remotely what Ethan is saying. Absolutely. I'm not even saying, I'm not saying anything that Ethan is saying. Absolutely, totally different. Um, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, he says it definitely was a wisdom. He broke, not exactly a breakdown, but a pointed snap, if that makes sense. Um... What do you mean he broke? He's not a Palestinian suffering in Palestine. What do you mean he broke? Was he that privileged and sheltered from the world that like war broke him? 
Like, what does that even mean? You know what I mean? People go to war every day. They don't break. So what about this man's life made him break? Because he found out, like, oh, my God, Americans are killing Palestinians. Like, I don't even know what that means, bro. Is it because he's 25? Was it this the first time? You know? There's something here. There's something... There's something here that feels dishonest. He was in the Air Force. Yeah, there's something here that feels dishonest to me. I wonder what it is. Huh. Interesting. What was it? Hmm. What makes me feel this way? What is he doing? I don't think people care about people like that. You know what I mean? And I don't think like if your decision has no wisdom that he cared for people as much as he it was like, you know what I mean? There's something there. What is it? You know, what is it? <sighs> Obviously, like people break. Obviously, people have breakdowns. Obviously, people can protest. Obviously, people can kill themselves in the name of a protest. Yeah, I think it was maybe the decision he made to protest the way he did. You know, maybe if he had done it after like 30 days of starving himself on the sidewalk, that would have been more interesting. But he just kind of like yeeted himself out of the conversation. And then it's like, okay. Okay. You know, he says he was in the military. He was forced to do things that others didn't agree with. He broke that feeling helpless. Like when you cry about the news when you were younger. Yeah, girl, but that's mental health. That So you're saying he's mentally ill. It was mental illness and neurodivergency that literally made me weep for people I've never met to such a point that I was like stifling my own life. It's not within reason to sabotage your own life for strangers on a different part of the planet. So like remember if you're comparing him to the suffering that I endured as a younger person, I went to therapy. Because it's irrational to stop yourself from living because somebody in a different country or different city is being is suffering. So I agree that he could be, but then it's mental health. And that's why it feels like a lie that it's just a protest. You know what I mean? So, yeah, there's something there that doesn't make sense to me. You know what I mean? Shay says, wait, can you clarify what you see that what you see that differ to Ethan? I'm not sure it's sounding. You guys are saying similar things in different ways. Yeah, it feels very impulsive, Brightson. I agree. It feels very impulsive, which means it lacks wisdom, which means it it might have, you know what I mean? Yeah, it seems very like impulsive. Um, Ethan, I am looking at this from a humanitarian perspective, like what it means to be a person on a planet, like an animal evolved over time. Ethan is trying to see it, what it means to be um, like a news story. Like Ethan is seeing a guy who just killed himself. I'm seeing like, I'm I'm commenting on like the whole picture. Ethan's only seeing this. So it's different. I'm not saying this guy was mentally ill and it was a suicide. I'm saying we don't know, but we're trying to figure it out. So I'm saying I don't know. Ethan is saying we're glorifying a suicide. I'm saying you can't even glorify him. I'm saying that there's nothing to glorify. So like it doesn't matter if you glorify him. Like what are you glorifying? You know what I mean? So like is it that we're trying to problem solve? Ethan has made a decision about what he thinks it is. I'm saying, oh, what is it? You know what I mean? I believe in extreme protests. Like, if you want to do that, do it. I'm not, I've never had a problem with, like, extreme protests, except if it hurts other people, obviously. Um, but something about this didn't seem like that. The other flavors of protests I've seen are very interestingly different. Have you guys ever seen anyone else burn themselves alive? I've seen a few people. I've seen other forms of protest. It's a very different thing. It's not the same. So it's interesting. Now, again, maybe that was just his relationship with it. Maybe it was the American in him that actually made him perform differently, right? Or react differently. Hannah says, what do you mean it feels like a lie? That's my neurodivergent way of saying it doesn't feel like we know this full story. Like something doesn't feel right. I say that to my callers a lot. Like, ooh, that feels like a lie. But I don't mean that you're a liar. I mean, ooh, something doesn't feel honest or real or, or fully thought through. Hannah says, like, would you, uh, would you like it if you were lying? Wait, would you like, 
would you feel like you were lying if you called it a protest or something else? Or other people are lying? I just, I think there's something here that isn't right. Like, I feel like the way we're even talking about it isn't right. You know, like there's something, mm, it's like when I hear people talk and I'm like, ooh, that doesn't sound honest. Like Ethan, Ethan's saying, why are you guys still mad? Oh, Ethan, he's saying the thing. Ethan keeps saying the thing that like isn't fully honest. You know, like, mm, I don't know what that means, but something's wrong here. That's what I mean by it. It's like my, it's like my spidey sense of like, mm, something feels, some deception somewhere. Yes, there's some, something, but I don't know what it is, you know? Emmy says it seems like it's about him, not about the cause. I agree, especially if he used it as an out of the, from the military could be both. Yeah, it seemed about him, like his beliefs, but like in his head, did he sit there and think, you know what would really help Palestine? Killing myself. And I'm like, what? Like, do you mean to me that a man sat there and he was like, you know what would really help Palestine? This. And I'm like, there are so many other ways you could have helped. So a part of me thinks it was impulsive and coinciding with him growing up in a cult. And then he got to another, because again, kids who grow up in cult or with religious, um, uh, high, uh, restrictive environments, high control environments, they don't just come out of it without therapy. Has he had therapy? He went straight into the military, you know, and I'm not saying, I'm not saying it in the same way everyone else is saying it. Everyone else is saying it to dismiss him. And I'm saying this is so fascinating as a human. And then I'm saying if you automatically think he's brave and a hero, that's also your bias. So it'd be biased to say he's automatically a hero and he's automatically just suicidal. Like what about the guys? There's like a much more interesting answer. And I want to know what that answer is because I know that can't be true. None of those things are true. He cannot be both brave and it's just suicide. There's something else that's more honest and I don't trust the majority to figure it out. So let's do it. What could it be? What is the thing? What is the thing? X says, would you still call it impulsive considering that he left all his money in a will to the Palestinian Children's Fund? Good question. What is impulsive? Impulsivity can last or be as long as even a few months. Impulsivity is like a riding of a wave that lasts and you don't. Impulsivity means you're not thinking. Excuse me, you're just moving. You're not thinking. Impulsivity can last a second or months. So was he impulsive for months? Did he grab an idea, hold it, and go, this is what I'm doing, and I'm not thinking about any other answer? Is it impulsive to build a bunker because you think the world's going to end? A little bit, right? It's a little bit impulsive. Okay, so like, was it that? I don't know. I can't read his mind. So that's the question. He doesn't feel like another protester. Guys, have you seen pro – I'm asking if you've seen it because I'm a very – in my, like, I feel things out. I've seen videos of protesters. I've seen them and I'm like, okay, yeah, I get it. That was definitely your decision. I want to say this was his decision. Um, but I don't know. I don't know. Something, something feels off, but I could be very wrong. Hmm. He's been against Israel this whole time. Okay, I believe that. Absolutely. Yeah. Hmm. Kenny says, but how does it help the cause? He's trying to bring attention to something we haven't stopped for talking about for months. Hmm. But he says, to be fair, active military, you have to be careful how you protest. He could be punished for sitting and starving himself instead. On top of that, just feeling helpless and not knowing. But why did he do it? Why did he do it? Okay, so tell me why he did it. Why, why he chose to die for the sake of Palestinians in a way that helps zero Palestinians. What, do we have any data? Okay, do, when, how would we find the data of how this would help Palestinians? Does anybody know that? That's what I'm curious. So again, when you think through a protest, even if it's the wrong idea, you usually have a plan. What was his plan? That's what I wanna know. What was his plan? So if he came to you as your friend, okay, let's say it like this. Aaron is your friend and he comes to you and says he's going to do this. What do you say? Go ahead. Tell me what you would say to him. Would you say, oh, this is like a really valid way of protesting and I'm with you on this? 
Or would you say absolutely not? Because I have Catholics that I know through friends, like I don't care if they starve themselves or pro-life or pro-choice, like you do you. I'm not going to stop you. Like you're a protester. If you're a protester and you want to starve yourself, like I'm not going to stop you. Like as long as it's like you have a reasoning, there's a thought out plan, all that stuff. Okay. If Aaron comes to you and says, hey, I'm going to do this. As his friend, what do you do? Do you stop him or do you help him? Or do you say, okay, yeah, I support your right to like express yourself in this way. Right? So that's the question. And I, th and would you tell anybody, like, would you, so again, mm, I want to know what he was hoping to accomplish. He explained it in the post before he did this. In a post, oh my God, I'm so behind on all this. Damn. Post. Let's look it up. I'm not seeing it. Now all the articles I read today, I read like like five or six of them. None of them mentioned a post. Post Twitter? Original video? Last words. Well, we know what the last words are. Unless it's something different. Is there a different last word? Okay, hold on. Okay. Um, okay. No, we already, we saw this. It's in the video. Okay, we saw this in the video. This isn't new. Oh, here's an uncensored photo of it happening. Okay, that sucks. Yeah, that's a shit way to die, bro. Yeah, it's a bummer way to die, dude. That sucks. And this video can see me walking. Yeah, okay, I'm not seeing it, guys. What What did you, it was on Facebook. Ew, I don't have a Facebook. Okay, hold on. Aaron, Facebook post. Okay, last Facebook post before. Okay, here we go. Wait, what? It was taken down? No, no, the video was taken down. Hold on. Took a Facebook earlier today. Okay, okay, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. No, I already said this out loud. Yeah, this isn't a reason to do it, guys. I already read this. His post said, many of us like to ask ourselves, what would we do if I was live during slavery or Jim Crow? You're live right now and it's happening, you bitches. That's what I'm saying. You're all lying to yourselves. It's happening right now. Or Jim Crow or apartheid. What would any? What would I do if my country was committing genocide? The answer is you're doing it right now. Everyone's doing it right now. Everyone's doing it forever of all time. Yeah, I already read that out loud. That's not a reason to do it, guys. I want a reason. I need an adult answer here. What is the reason? I'm getting fed up. I want an adult answer. What was the reason? That is a child's answer. That is a child's answer. Oh my God, the world is mean. Bro, the world's mean right now. It was 10 days ago and it was before Palestine. You cannot possibly think this is the right answer. I want the real fucking answer. It's a lie. See how it's a lie? That's a lie. What's the real answer? That is not an actual answer. Slavery is alive right now. People are slaves right now. What are you talking about? Have you seen the prison system? People are committing genocide all in different parts of the world right now. Okay, I want the real answer. Not the some fake faux like fucking answer. He was saying it so people can't say he didn't say do anything, bro. What did he, I want the real answer, bro. I want the real answer, not this fake performative bullshit. He could have just been a man child. I mean, he was a 25 year old boy. So probably. Um, was Could he have been trying to encourage other Americans to follow him? To follow him into what? Death? That's crazy. He didn't want to serve in the military because he had to actively contribute. He could have just gone to prison. That would have been an interesting protest. Cognitive dissonance says, I think he knew deep down that people would never accept a redheaded <laughs> savior. <laughs> it's not funny. It's not funny, is it? Eek says there's something unique about his circumstance that brought him to do it. So there's something unique about his circumstance in the relation to the issue that brought him to do it. Well, could be schizophrenia. Could be bad politics. You know, is the ever, is the answer ever knowable at this point? Well, probably not because he didn't leave us with a real answer. This isn't a real answer, guys. Like none of this is real. All of you are living in this every day. Once Palestine is done and you forget about it, there's something happening. It was happening before Palestine happened. You guys didn't feel this way before Palestine, right? But Palestine was always happening. 
It was always happening. It happened before you were even born. Palestine and Israel were having problems. Again, like saying like, what would you do if your country was doing it? Your country was always doing it. This country is founded on the blood of Native Americans. It used the, the, the bodies of black people to build this country and then give them shit for it. So, again, like, it's just like your living history. We're all animals on a planet. So this can't just, you can't be killing yourself, okay, like, without a plan. Or because you want to. If you want to do it, I support you. But you got to have a reason. And I want it to be, I just wanted to die. That's a great reason. Saying I did it because slavery, bro, what? Did he want to be some sort of martyr? I think martyrs are narcissists. I think martyrs are narcissists. Not always, but sometimes. I, th I, think, I think a little bit. I think a little bit. Just a little bit. A little bit. Just a little bit. They're high on the ego, you know, just a little, not all, but you know, there's a type of martyr, it's just a little bit narcissistic, you know, like who the fuck are you, bro? Am Amaris says he felt invincible. He wanted to be bigger than what he was at 25. He was still a lost boy feeling like he had no power. The only power he had was to take his own life. Well, to be fair, you know what I mean? To be fair. To be fair. Bryson says, I truly doubt he was introspective enough to give his give us his real answer. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, like, sacrificing yourself in a reasonable way at a reasonable time feels fine. But in unreasonable circumstances, I think, is, like, probably a sign of, like, you think too highly of yourself a bit, buddy. I think people who seem like they're sacrificing for the world are also just really high on their own farts. Bryson said, ultimately, you have to think pretty highly of yourself to assume your death would inspire the ending of a war. Poor guy. I wish he could have seen the overall response and predicted it. Mm. That's what I'm saying. It does take like a high sense of like, literally Palestinian children are dying and they aren't enough to motivate. You think like some random white soldier is going to do it. I keep saying white because I just want to like point that out a little bit. But you know what? Like people do what they think is best. And I think he did that. I think he did what he thought was best as everyone does. Israel is doing what they think is best and Palestine is doing what they think is best and you're doing what you think is best. How many of you every day think like, hey, this is the best I am. This is the best I got. This is the best I can do. Yeah. So is Aaron. Aaron's doing the best he, think, he thinks he could do. Hannah says, do you think any... Do you, any of you think a mentally sound individual could self emulate, emulate, emulate? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Mm. I think they could be mentally sound, but they'd still be adhering to the bubble. So they wouldn't be doing it for themselves. They'd be doing it for the, the community, which I don't recommend killing yourself for your community. But I do. I do think a totally mentally sound person could choose to do this. Yeah, mentally sound people um, do plenty of weird things every day. I don't, yeah, I do think they could do that. I don't recommend doing it, <clears throat> but, you know, people do things for things they believe in, which your belief is a construct as well. So remember that you're doing something for a construct and that's your decision. What does mentally sound me really mean? Uh, means within reason. So is there a, a thing you did within reason for the circumstances and tools at your disposal? Right? Like, did you do with the best you had with the understanding you knew? You know what I mean? You know, Haley, if you want him to kill himself, girl, just say it. Just say you want people to kill themselves, you know? Like, again, I'm anti-violence, period. I think you should live and die how you want. Uh... And I think if you kill yourself because you deeply want to, it's different than doing it for society or doing it for other people. I don't think that's okay. But I mean, you do you. You're an animal. You know what I mean? But I don't believe in violence personally. So like if you guys are pro-violence, you can be pro-violence. But I don't think him deciding to be violent in order to ask for peace makes sense to me. I don't believe that war brings peace. I don't think peace comes from violence. But... Thinking the world will ever be peaceful is also not a delusion I live under because I don't think humans have even come 
to that point as like a species. Like you can't even stop fighting in your own bars, in your own homes. You know what I mean? Yes, Maiden, it's not even your own construct. That's the worst part. That's the worst part. He didn't even kill himself for his own construct. He killed himself for somebody else's, which is fine. People do that all the time. You have the right, you know what I mean, to kill yourself for the construct. I just recommend not doing that. I don't think the world deserves your life. I don't think the world or your community deserves your life. Your life is so important. Don't give it away to the world. I think your life is so valuable. You should not give it to other people. You know? Shay says, as a progressive, what would you do if there was a war on religion and people started attacking religious people? Just wondering, well, what do you mean attacking religious people? I don't think people have the right to attack people. I don't think people have the right to attack people. I don't think you have the right to attack people. You have the right to self-defense, which is very nuanced, but you cannot attack people. Self-defense is not attacking people. So like if people started attacking people who are religious, I don't think in a, in a civilized society you should have the right to that. I don't think you should have the right to attack people or imprison people falsely. I don't think you should have the right to discriminate against people for religious beliefs or orientation. I think people should have choice. Which is obviously very nuanced because like if you par you're a part of a religion or society, your choice is obviously being impacted, right? Like we all give up a sense of freedom to be a part of collectives. All of us do that. You know, Japanese says, well, he did not kill himself for his own construct. Like maybe he didn't kill himself for Palestine, but for the online pro-Palestinian Western lefty movement. So if so, he got his glory from his bubble. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, his bubble. If Yeah, that's a decision. Like, again, I if my friend came to me and said, this is the way I'm going to protest, I would say I wouldn't prefer this from you. I would say that this isn't the world doesn't deserve your life. This community doesn't deserve your life. But if you would like to give it to them, like, that's a decision you can make. I would not promote that decision according to my personal values. But, like, who gives a fuck what Brittany thinks, right? Who gives a fuck about my personal values? Right? So Aaron had the right to engage in this behavior. And if other people want to start engaging in this kind of behavior, it's, you know what I mean? Maybe Eugenia Cooney should just say she's starving herself for Palestine. Make everybody feel okay about it, you know? It's what it is, which is why it's so remar it remarks me as so fucking... It's a bit of a joke. Everybody relax. It's a bit of a joke. Odd that this is coming from the left. They're they're exhibiting really <coughs> reactionary traits. <gasps> Remarkably, um, what's the word? It's like um, reactionary. It's what it is, which is why it's so remar it remarks me as so fucking odd that this is coming from the left. They're they're exhibiting really <coughs> reactionary traits when they're saying it's a bit of a joke. It's just a bit of a joke, okay? It's a bit inside thought outside. It's the inside thought outside. Can I just say the left is as violent as the right? I don't know why y'all pretend you're all pacifists. I'm the pacifist. None of you are pacifists enough to be as pacifist as Britney. Their progressives are incredibly violent. Have you seen a progressive protest? I've been to many of them. Very violent people, as well as conservatives. Conservatives, be, they're all violent. Humans are violent. Thing like, it's not suicide. Because here, this is the way no, I- No, no, no. You, again, calling it suicide is like saying a military soldier who sacrifices his life for his fellow soldiers is committing suicide. Like, if a military soldier jumping on a bomb to protect his fellow soldiers is suicide, then, like, we're not having the same conversation. I, I explained it, and I think this is good. When you watch the video, he's he's pulling the gasoline on himself, and um, <coughs> yeah, yeah, says the way you tear people up in these comments. I beg to differ, girl. That's you know verbal violence. I'm good at that though. I'm Middle Eastern. <laughs> we're <gr> <laughs> we're great at verbal violence. Let me tell you. By the way, you all look fat today. That's a joke because Middle Eastern moms be fat shaming you left and right. That's a joke. That's a Middle Eastern joke. He's a fucking icon. Okay. Good. You can believe that. I'm just trying to have a conversation about it. Is he an icon? I, I think, you know who I think an icon is? Cher. Cher's an icon. Um, if somebody came and stopped him, there was guards and like, excuse me, what are you doing, sir? Right before he, you know, let himself on fire. Um, if someone was able to tackle him and prevent him from lighting himself on fire, mm-hmm. 
before he did and, you know, get him some mental health evaluation and get him some help and stuff. Clearly, he's in a vulnerable point in his life. Can at least say that. No, you're doing it again. This is the bubble thought. Lakara says, wait, you don't count self emelia burning yourself alive. You don't count in death or suicide. Guys, again, if a soldier jumps on a grenade to save his fellow men, he knows he's going to die. Is that suicide? Choosing how you die isn't necessarily suicide. Dying for a cause isn't suicide. When I think about suicide, in Brittany's opinion, it's a mental health problem you need to get help for. You don't really want to die, but you kill yourself because you don't know what else to do. So to me, that's suicide. Protestingly killing yourself, killing yourself as a soldier, killing yourself because you do euthanasia and you're ready. None of that I call suicide. I think we need to have a different word for the mental health condition that makes you want to die and killing yourself. I think we should have a definition. This is a time and culture to shift this. I think people in Canada and in Europe have already started this. I really think we need a different word for the mental health condition that makes you feel like you want to die, but you don't want to die. And then the decision that you actually want to die and it's within reason. I, I think we really need to talk. These are very different things. Now, in 10 years from now, do you think he's going to look back and say, I wish I burned alive? Or will, do you think he'll say, I'm so grateful. I mean, he's dead, bro. That I was stopped from doing Wait, isn't he dead? He didn't die? No, he died. That. Mm -hmm. Because, and, and by the way, this man has what? friends. He has family. He has people that are going to be deeply affected by his suicide. And again, this, there's this magical thinking that it's not a suicide. That's just so weird. You, it, you know, it's not a suicide until it... Um, we don't believe in suicide and we're pro mental health unless it's for a good cause. Then, you know, not. Well, that's the problem is like they're not the same thing. You know, they're like not the same thing. Like they're very different. You know, um, if you're under psychosis, would you use a different word for suicide? Because that would mental health where you don't have to disappear. Though you don't have that despair. If you're if you're committing. OK, again, if you're OK. When a person makes a rational decision to end their life, there's a process that follows. Example, none of his friends and family knew he was doing it, okay, from my understanding. Versus Brittany, a famous woman who died of stage five cancer, had her family, friends, everyone around her. She had a huge support system. She decided to do euthanasia or um, assisted suicide, sorry, assisted suicide instead of suffering through the cancer prognosis because it was just going to end horribly, Okay. So that is like a very thoughtful, considerate way to end your life versus somebody who's like, again, there are nuances to this. So there is a difference in my mind between somebody who like chooses death out of like a very positive and wonderful decision and then somebody who kills themselves because of like some mental health issue or some religious issue. Like I've heard that so many of the suicide bombers don't even want to die. They're threatened and they have to. So I don't know. Like, you know what I mean? And suicide bombers, to be fair, like A.S. said earlier, they do take people with them. So again, it's not like I'm, I think you should live and die how you want. But again, like, why are you doing that? You know what I mean? Then go for it. You know, the you hear this all the time about from... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold up. Haley says, I just don't get why I'm a normie in a bubble for caring about genocide when Brit used to cry on camera about child abuse. Used to. Then I went to therapy and realized it was driving me crazy to ruin my life crying for people who had nothing to do with me. Right? It's only more like caring about people to the point where it ruins your life is not within reason. Right? So yes, I went to therapy for that, Haley. I had to go to therapy. And it was part of like a borderline and abandonment and like high empathy, probably related to neurodivergency. Yes. When I was watching Palestine Israel stuff, I had to stop doing it because it was like it was triggering all those feelings I had, but it was triggering me. It was not benefiting my mental health. You know what I mean? And so that's the thing. These people are not in my life. And to be a good friend to the people that are actually being impacted by these things, I needed to make this not about me but about those people and call up people and say, do you need my support? Do you need my like shoulder to cry on? Do you need me to accessible to you? If I made it about me and continue to let it shatter my brain, then I'm not allowing 
my actual compassion to help people who are actually suffering from it, actually suffering from it, right? So that's the difference. Of course, I, Brittany, I could cry about anything. Girl, I could see a cat in the street and I will start crying. I could literally like little, I'm not even fucking with you. If I see like Abba asked me the other day, would I feel just as bad for a rich man dying than a poor man? I would, I would just, yes, I could do that for everybody. I could do it for a rat in the sewer. I'd be like, oh my God, that rat, and he had a whole life and ratatouille. And like, I can do that. And if I keep doing it, at some point, it's just fucking psycho. Okay? You got to keep your shit together. Okay? So you can stay on top of it and help the people who are really suffering. So caring about genocide is within reason, but it's also not hard. It's like saying like, oh, yes, I also don't like rape. Wow, brave take, guys. Good job. Um, brave take. You know what I mean? Nobody thinks they're pro-genocide, bitch. Now, one person genuinely thinks they're pro-genocide except crazy people. You think Ethan thinks he's pro-genocide? You think people that are supporting Israel actually think it's genocide? Or do they think it's just war, dude? That's what I'm saying. Meet people where they're at. Meet yourself where you're at. People don't think of their brains like this. Do you think Islam or like Muslims think of themselves as like misogynists? Do you think Catholics think of themselves as misogynists? No. Is a lot of their doctrine misogynistic? Yes. Nobody thinks of themselves with the bad words. Nobody thinks, oh, I'm the bad guy. Nobody thinks they're the bad guy. So just remember that, okay? Very few people think they're the bad guy. Survivors of suicide attempts, that they have a moment of clarity that ultimately... They're like, realize, I don't know if he went through that. I mean, again, his resolve was was pretty apparent. But in 10 years from now, I'm pretty sure. Now, Ethan's projecting his values onto him. That he's more likely to say, I'm glad I'm alive and that I was stopped than not. That's my opinion. And so we need to, uh, you know, I don't want other people to go do that because they're inspired by him. That's my, that's my opinion. You know, but... Okay, obviously, guys, yes, some people are pro-genocide. I see your comments, obviously. But I've seen enough people in Palestine calling for the death of Jews, and I've seen enough Jews calling for the death of Palestinians. I'm sick of both of you. Now, Mama Simon's going to come out. No, Mama Simon's too compassionate. Auntie Brittany's going to come out, and I'm going to start not caring about any of you. Because the same group of people that believe in genocide, they're the same group of extremists on both sides. Most of the normies in the middle, most of the normal Palestinians, most of the normal Jewish people, they just fucking want peace and they don't know how to get it. Okay? Everyone thinks the other side is incredibly evil. And if you do not understand this, like genuinely, girl, go watch your Netflix and pretend you care. Okay? You think it's glamorizing because he's not your hero, not your martyr, not your symbol. Shout okay, I am confused. He's not alive, right? He's died. In the article, okay, I'm confused. Hold on. Mental health is the same move as transphobes. What the fuck? Charlie, can you... Uh, this is another comment I saw. <coughs> they go, if it was someone burning... Yeah, after seven hours, Bushnell was declared dead at the age of 25. Bring themselves alive for Israel, you would be saying the same thing. Are you no, crazy? That'd be, that would be even crazier. If someone was like, I'm burning myself alive for Israel, uh, would you be saying the same thing? Would you be like, I just... I also think this is a Western take because again, in other places, I don't know why the Buddhist monks be burning themselves exactly. But yeah, like uh, there is like another side of the planet where this is probably a little bit more common. So I would say that this form of protest was like too hard for people to sympathize with because it was so outside of our cultural understanding or bounds. So to be fair, people are not going to like understand it, right? I disagree, but I respect it. Fuck no, you'd be tap dancing on his corpse. You'd be pissing the fire out Whoa, on his I body. Don't know about that. Give me a break. And you know what? I would think that was crazy. I think that was bananas. Uh, you know what I mean? Um, uh, uh, so, no, I don't understand what you're saying. And the fact that you can't even meet me. It seems obvious that that's not what we would think. I don't know. But anyway, I know, what the, um, I know what the conclusion of this conversation is going to be. It's going to be that Ethan's a Zionist. Ethan is a um, uh, an Israeli shell. Ethan is uh, Islamophobic. All this types of shit that you fucking see f about anybody who doesn't toe the line precisely as you want it. Not even disagreeing, frankly, just trying to have a conversation. So, in in short, you know, suck my fucking dick. Jesus. How about that? Fuck you. Fuck you, people. Go somewhere else. Like, seriously, if you're that sensitive, 
that I, 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 I want to take mental health seriously. Something that I've been... Nah, nah. Virtue signal, virtue signal. Deeply, deeply propo uh, 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 and that I've spoke out against in my whole career. I've spoken out. I've made it one of my, the things that defines me as a person. Okay, if you can't tolerate a conversation in good faith, that you need to go the f Ethan doesn't deserve good faith. He doesn't give it to others. Fuck away and go to a community that is going to just tell you everything you want to hear all the time and never make you feel uncomfortable. That is literally the community Ethan lives in on a daily basis. His whole crew only ever tells Ethan exactly what he wants to hear every day. Comfy. There's plenty of them out there. Go. Don't fucking be here where I'm just trying. I love Ethan, but this is why. This is why my neurodivergent like, oh, oh, tingles. That's a lie. He doesn't know he's lying, but he's literally talking about himself right here. You know what I mean? Like he's he's literally doing the same thing. He has a whole team of yes men who never hold him accountable, who help him avoid nuance, who are not nuanced themselves. They're so bad faith. Just remember how shitty they treated Abba and Preach. And remember that because like, okay. For the most part, and that's what I was trying to do. And that's what I do in every serious situation. I try to make levity of a serious situation. I do it every time. Ah, uh, Lakar says, I think Ethan just can't imagine someone killing themselves intentionally without it being about mental health. Yeah, I think he probably just hasn't been exposed. To be fair, how many debate panels do we see about assisted suicide? Which we need a different word for, guys. Assisted chosen death. Like, it really should be called chosen death. Like, assisted chosen death. You know what I mean? So I think, like, Ethan just hasn't been around people with, like, in those situations, maybe. But also, like, I can understand him being upset with the form of protest regardless. Like, if he's upset with the form of protest, just say that. Like, honestly, in, in, to be honest with you, I think it's a bad form of protest. I personally think it's ineffective and inefficient, and I refuse to believe this is an efficient form of protest. But I don't care if people choose to die. I care if you actually want to die or if you think you should die because someone's convinced you you're not worth, like, you're not worth, like, you don't get to live or something. Obviously, I think your life is so important, you shouldn't give it to other people, including in a protesting manner. But lots of people go to protest every day with the knowledge that they could die. So again, I think, like, Ethan has to remember that, and we all have to remember that. It's not that you want to die, that's the problem. It's not that you choose to die or put your life at risk. It's why you're doing it. Why are you doing it? Time. If you're a fan of this word, just show you know it. I almost take it as a challenge when we're talking about something heavy, something horrible. When I get a donation, we're talking. I try to make a euthanasia is the other word for assisted suicide, right? In America, if you say euthanasia, a lot of people think government forced suicide. So I try not to use that word, even though it slips out. Levity. I try to make a joke about it. That's what I did. So you're a fake fucking fan. Fuck you. Ooh, Get if lost. you don't agree with me, you're a fake fucking fan, bro. <clears throat> I'm sick of it. Yeah, and if you want to call me a Zionist, just call me the fucking K-word to my face. Have some balls. Just call me a Jew, scumbag. Fuck you. Name another a minority that everyone would just stand by gleefully and silently. I saw this TikTok that blew my fucking mind. This girl, she's on a train in New York. And she's like, I saw these Orthodox Jews on the train. And the first thing I thought was, are they Zionists? Get the fuck away from me. I'm like, bitch, you hate Jewish people. And that had like 160,000 likes on TikTok. Wow. So what am I supposed to? Has Ethan seen the videos of the violent Zionists in Palestine? Like like kicking people out of their houses or like, has he seen the videos? Like, you know what I'm saying? I don't know if, okay, fear, fear is the root of all evil because fear makes you think irrationally, right? So you have to be within ration, ration. I understand, okay? But again, we form beliefs about people based off of enough data and understanding of what this thing or word or whatever presents or represents, so if you see a Jewish person in a particular aesthetic and you think they're Zionists and Zionists are people that kill Palestinians or Zionists are people that are a hate group, it's going to make your brain start to wonder, right? So it's like when you're having these conversations, it's like you have to ask yourself, well, why does the person have that bias and prejudice? We all have it. We do. 
it is a form of prejudice. It is a form of stereotype. It is a form of, which I think is also within reason most of the time, but not all of the time because you don't have the knowledge to really know how to decipher things. You know, one of the things that made me realize this about people the most was like music. I realized the people around me could not tell the difference between gang, gangs, um, rappers, emo kids, and like traditional like trailer druggies. And I was like, these are all very different categories of people. And you guys know my hyper focus or whatever you want to call it is categories and how those are all very different things. And so when people would talk to me, they'd be like, oh, person with tattoo doing drugs all the same. And I'm like, oh, those are all very different people. So again, when we're having conversations about like who is what kind of a group and what does that mean? I don't think people even have the knowledge to know what they're looking at. That's why bias and prejudice is so weird because you'll look at someone and be like, oh, I know what they are. Like Ethan has literally a reputation on the internet of just calling people names. Like if he can call Vosh a PDF file, then people can call him a Zionist and mean it in the bad way, right? Because we're not being precise with our language and we're not being honest about what makes the differences between these things, right? It's like my Seattle friends at the time I was like listening to Jordan Peterson, which you guys know how I feel about Jordan Peterson. And people were like, oh, my God, Brittany, are you a white nationalist? And I was like, are you asking an Assyrian woman with immigrant parents from Iraq if she's a white nationalist because she listens to maps of meaning? Like they're so fucking in their own bubbles. They never even think about another person's lived experience. They just see like this one thing and they're like, oh, and by the way, that friend ended up having like a total mental breakdown and like ditching all the friends and like moving to a different state and like, it's fine. Mental health is mental health. But see how it's mental health? I'm like, how could you think that about somebody? And you think that about somebody because you don't have the like ability to decipher like it's your trauma. And that's why I say like trauma. It's bias and prejudice. You learn these things because you were taught these things. Think as a Jewish person, when <clears throat> this is a celebrated opinion, to be on a train <clears throat> with Jewish people and your first thought is, get the fuck away from me, without knowing a single thing about them, without talking about them, that's anti-Semitism. I'm sorry to fucking spell it out. You know, and it's, and it's sickening. And you don't, and you know, so many of you just don't care. Because, you know, horrible things are happening in Gaza, which is true, and which I've voiced. Yeah, it sucks when your people feel like they're being targeted. My mom said to me, I feel like the most targeted and made fun of religion is c c Catholicism. And honestly, she might be right, but I'm not sure. But also, to be fair, modern Catholics aren't going to, like, threaten your life or something. But a lot of other religions still do, so to be fair. But, like, also, I think that's interesting. Like, I meet people all the time. They're like, my group is the most discriminated against. And I'm like, okay. Everyone feels that way. Everyone feels that way. White men, Brittany, I feel like white men have it the hardest. Okay. Black men, I think oh, black men have it the hardest. Okay. Jews, I think Jews have it the hardest. Okay. I don't know why we're playing this, like, compare suffering game. You know what I mean? Like, why are we doing this? Like, why are we doing that? Okay, if you call your, if you have any comments in the comment section with the words Jew lover, like, that's absolutely, you're not welcome in the community. You can't say Jew lover. That sounds racist. That sounds anti-Semitic. Saying like, do you like the Jews? Are you in love with the Jews? Like, that feels anti-Semitic to me. Because then you're targeting them as something, like, that's, that feels anti-Semitic to me. I don't like that. I don't like that energy from you, bro. Repeatedly. Repeatedly. Yeah, people are saying move on. Listen, I got to get this off my chest. <clears throat> it's truly, truly, truly remarkable. <clears throat> she was a Jew too. Yeah, Jews can be anti-Semitic also. She was a fucking spreading anti-Semitic psychotic shit. I don't give a fuck if she was a Jew. Would you say the same thing to another minority? Like a black person on a train is like, get away from me, black people. Would you say, oh. Yes, you they do it all the time. And they're often wrong, right? But it's also a possibility that it could be right, but also it's just coming from trauma. Like, it's just trauma, bro. People do it all the time. Black, he can say that, that's fine. No, Jews can be anti-Semitic. Jews can also be fucking hateful. I don't care that she was Jewish. It doesn't make it better. She, do you think the 160,000 people liking her video were all like, 
oh, you know, we're all Jewish. We get it, you know. No, 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 no. I don't fucking care that she's Jewish. She's crazed. Yeah, Ethan definitely needs some therapy to talk this through, bro. Doesn't matter. Ethan is very sheltered, Yaya. Yaya said Ethan is very, Ethan is so sheltered. Guys, Ethan is so sheltered. Remember that. Ethan is so sheltered. Guys, they didn't know what Chibi was. Like him and Ela didn't, don't even know. They're like, they're like, what adults like to cutify themselves? And I'm like, what? What? Like they don't even know. Like they're so sheltered. I can't even start to explain to you how sheltered these two humans are. You got to take that into consideration. They're very sheltered people and they're very privileged. Okay. They don't know anything. You know. Just don't give a fuck. She has absolutely expressed anti-Semitic views. Dude, she literally said, get away from me to a, <laughs> to a group. That's lit the definition of racism. If yeah, yeah. People got inherent racism, prejudice. If you're a woman and you're on a train with a bunch of men, I say be, be misandrous, bitch. Absolutely look at those group of men suspiciously, girl. Absolutely. It's called surviving, bitch. Yeah, bitch. Sadly, the world doesn't get along like fully. We got to be a little suspicious of each other. I try hard not to be suspicious of individuals, but I'm suspicious as fuck of groups. I'm suspicious of fuck of groups, but not of individuals. An individual man on a train, less suspicious. A group of men on a train, what are you trying to do, bro? You trying to fuck with me? Like, I'm just saying, groups of people, I feel very suspicious of. A singular person, nah, I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. We just trying to get home. That's not it. The nothing that doesn't exist in this world. She looked at people of a of an I specific identity and said, "Get the fuck away from me," without knowing a single goddamn thing about them. I don't give a fuck that she's Jewish. Yeah, this is like a very shallow understanding. I I think it's like, and it goes back to that conversation around like. Should straight men be in lesbian bars? Which, by the way, none of you watched that video before you commented. You literally wrote, didn't watch the video, but this is my comment. Humans are so fuck. Anyways, it's like we're not asking if the law should keep straight men out of lesbian bars. We're asking if as a community we should make each other feel more safe by signaling spaces um, aren't about hating people, but about making a safe space for people. It's like a very nuanced question. Mick Gee says, would you cross the street if a group of black men were coming your way? I cross the street anytime a group of anyone is coming my way, unless it's broad daylight and unless uh, it's a group of women. I don't cross the street if it's a group of women. But if it's a group of guys or if it's even like a, someone walking behind me, I'll cross the street. Yeah, obviously I'm not going to cross the street for women, though women can beat you up too, you know. Yeah, is Ollie London not homophobic because he's gay? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> is Blair White not transphobic because she's trans? None of you would agree to that. So why are you expressing- That's true. I mean, that's true. But the circumstance is different. So again, like one's coming from a, should I be afraid? And one is coming because I hate those people. So the girl on the train is asking, should I be afraid, I think? And Blair White just like, is saying like something's wrong with trans people. Like in a, it's a different, it's a different nuanced perspective, but I see the simplification, right? Like that's what I mean. The, the, the simplification is almost correct, but not correct. It's not, the, it's not happening for the same reasons. The why matters. Why is Blair White, is Blair White transphobic? I think Blair White is less transphobic than she is conflicted with her own relationship with transness. Right? Like, I wouldn't, I don't use those words as loosely as, like, other people do. People, again, I can't. It just would be a miscategorization. Um, internalized transphobia is probably what Blair has versus being a transphobe. You know what I mean? She's probably suffering from internalized trans transphobia, which is different than being transphobic itself. Right? It's, like, different. Expressing Whoop. such dumb fucking thoughts in my chat. Why? Why? Is Blair White... GM says, um, I'm super behind, but to say that 30K dead in Palestine is anything other than a genocide feels like gaslighting. I feel like we're all complicating something so fucking simple. And I feel like being gaslit when someone says it's complicated. Well, um, 
<sighs> okay, what is genocide? Genocide, the deliberate and systematic destruction of a group of people because of their ethnicity, nationality, religion, or race. Okay, so a genocide, so is a target, which could be happening, by the way, is a target of a minority or a specific group, not minority, a specific group because of who they are, not because of the land they're occupying. You know what I'm saying? So like, if I was going to kill you, regardless of what you were, because you're occupying land I want, it's not a genocide. If you're genociding people because of who they are, that's a genocide. So do we think that Israelis are killing Palestinians because they're Palestinian or because they want the land they're on? Do you think this is about land or do you think this is about differences of people? And if it's both, then we can have a conversation about it being both, right? While this is Brittany, I'm trying to leave, but your show is addictive. Mwah, 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 mwah. Get addicted. Like transphobic. Answer that question. <clears throat> and then don't fucking express such a moronic shit to me, please. It's embarrassing. Chestnuts. Play chestnuts. Okay, hold on. Are You guys are saying the train video is totally different than Ethan is saying. Let's see if Ethan's seeing it in his trauma. Because look, guys, the way you view things, the way you hear things is dictated by your trauma and your knowledge of the world. Right? So, okay, hold on. Train. How do I look it up? Train lady. Anti. Uh, or no, should I look up train lady? Zionist? How do I look it up? Does anybody have the link? Can you guys, can someone, what TikTok is he talking about? Is it on uh, YouTube or Reddit or something? How do I look this up? I want to see it. I want to see it. Does anyone want to tweet it to me or text it to me in Discord? <clears throat> Zach, please. Zionism isn't a race. Judaism is a fucking ethnicity, you idiot. Stop trying to carve out circles for you to be a fucking hateful, bigoted bitch. Fuck you. How about that, scumbag? Go ahead, play the chestnuts. Hurry. Thank you. That's the only thing that's going to save me. <laughs> okay. You guys are saying if they were Israeli, they wouldn't be killed and displaced. Yes, it's because they're Palestinian. Okay. Okay. So now the second question. Okay. Okay. Now the second question above that. Let's. Okay. So now we're in the micro bubble. So the micro bubble is, let's say it's genocide and it's like uh, also the land. OK, so let's take it out and let's zoom out into the little bit more of the macro. So this is politics. So politics is a different game. Reminder that politics is not about your humanity, right? <clears throat> so politics is not about your humanity. It's not about like right or wrong. You know what I mean? It's not about like saving people. Politics is about winning as a country. OK, so now there's a war and a war whether unjust or not, is the way human beings have taken over territories and destroyed civilizations time and time again. And you are now, congratulations, living history. We are all always, which is why I tell you the world doesn't deserve your life, living history. So if you would like to give your life and continue giving your life to your these places, these countries, these bigger, you know what I mean, these games that don't even care about it, you can keep doing that. You don't have to. You can move around it, okay? The world doesn't care about small peons like us, okay? So we can move around. They care about the big fish, okay? So again, okay, you guys can't put links in the chat unless you're mods. So if you wanna link the video to the TikTok, you guys gotta do it on Discord or something else. Um, or you can tweet it at me and I can go check my Twitter or something. But okay, so take it out and zoom it out into the war perspective. If Israel wants more of that territory and is willing to do whatever it takes to get it and they use their ally called the United States, then yes, we are living at a time in history where we are about to watch a whole group of people basically either be displaced or disappear in the name of winning that said war. And you, much like anyone else, is living on land that had a similar history you like everyone always says like we're in the modern world we're in the modern world the modern world is just people in a different place in history right so again when we're having this conversation we have to decide if we understand that part of it that is by the way i think immoral but who cares what britney thinks right ari says it's not a war war is fought between armies the idf is mostly killing civilians 
It's a territory grab. Call it that if you'd like. I don't know. I'm just speaking like I'm trying to have a conversation with you guys. Call it a territory grab, girl. It's still a fucking decimation of a people in order to grab land, if that's what you want to call it. And if that's the case, then of course Israel, within reason, would play their game of chess by connecting to their ally, the United States, who, by the way, wants to save the superpower and is going to lose it, by the way, if they decimate the middle class and they decimate their like means of uh, uh, like, OK, again, I don't want to talk about politics. But again, if we're jumping into the war bubble, if we're jumping into the conflict bubble, then ultimately all of our countries are just here to take advantage of other places and like try to win land. Right. So again, I'm I'm not trying to say it's ethical or moral. I'm trying to say you have to first acknowledge what is happening and then you have to acknowledge like what to do about it. Right. And like that's the part that's hard. You know what I mean? Like, again, I don't think politics is about anything but winning and losing. I don't think anyone cares about the value or sanctity of life. I don't think anyone cares about people when we talk about politics. Politics is just a way that some bubble of the whole population operates to move things forward or behind or whatever you want to say. Okay? So again, you can decide what's happening, but we are living history. You know what I mean? So we're watching like history happen. Lily Weiss says, politically, are Arab Israelis suffering as much as Palestinians? If it's true, if it's a true genocide, they would be suffering equally, no? Since the same religion and ethnicity? Are Arab Israelis suffering as much... Um, from my understanding, Arabs in Israel are doing okay and they've continued to be okay, but I don't know. And that's one of the things to take into consideration as well is like, there are Arabs living in is Israel. There are people living in Israel. And so, you know, Paige says, I mean, what white people did to the Native Americans was about land too, but it was ultimately a genocide. I think that's a fair argument. And I do think it's a combination of a genocide because of that the, they thought the natives weren't as good as them. And it was a fight for land. And so I want, like, again, we have to take that into consideration that like even living on the United States, like, unless, like, again, I don't want people to think I'm like, I'm very anti-war, but that's not the point. The point is like, are you playing the strategy game of the politics? Or are you playing the humanity game? Because you can't have both. You know what I mean? Like, it's not, we're not, again, I don't know if like people are willing for that nuance. You know what I mean? It's just like Ethan saying like, I don't care what it's called. Like, Fosh is a PDF file. Yes, if you're, I don't care what it's called. It's a genocide. If you say, I don't care about the details, it's this thing then then we're not having the same conversation, which is why I think history repeats itself, right? Which is why things like end up the same in the end. But also like that's so human. So like who fucking cares? You only care when it impacts your families. Think about all the Christian minorities that have been persecuted, then go on to persecute LGBT people. Think about all the Muslims who get persecuted and then they go on to persecute LGBT people. The oppressed are more than happy to oppress others. It is the way of the human. Because they work as collectives, because they work as groups, because they do not want to work together. Because honestly, let's be real, we all got some kind of people we don't want to get along with. And you know what? I lose fans, I lose subs, I lose memberships every time I say this. <laughs> and I don't... I gotta stand on my principles, man. My principles, What, what is it man? I'm even saying? Let's think about it. I'm fully in support of the people of Gaza. I'm with all of them. I'm with all you guys. My take was, let's be a little thoughtful of Jewish people. And also, um, let's also uh, be mindful that suicide is bad and contagious. Suicide is contagious. You guys know that? That's a phenomenon. I didn't know that. It is. When Kurt... When Kurt um, Cobain. What's this Kurt Nirvana Cobain. guy's name? Kurt Cobain. Kurt Cobain killed himself. There was like tons of people who did, who killed themselves right Cobain. afterwards. Yeah. <coughs> that's, 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 you know what I mean? Keep the chestnuts going. It's the only thing that's going to pull me out of this. <laughs> if you have any other ones too, just keep them running. That's what I need. Charlie's got more to say. My partner's Jewish and they're going through a tough time as well. We talk a lot about the war. Oh, the El Salvadorian War and the stark similarities. What is happening? Yeah. Yes, Blair is a transfer. Okay, thank you, Charlie. See, we made we 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 came through to Charlie. Thank you. I love you, Charlie. 
That's all I want is a conversation. I don't want to be shouted out that I'm a Zionist. Or, or, you know. And, like, if I wasn't a Jew, if I wasn't Israeli, half Israeli, or whatever, I'm, I mean, I'm American, but I have Israeli citizenship, would people be screaming at me that I'm a Zionist? If I wasn't, if I was like, let's be careful about mental health and not encourage it. It's just not an argument. Like, I don't know. See, my values can't care if people kill themselves. Only if they kill themselves because they didn't want to, because someone convinced them they weren't worthy of living. So my personal values think people have the right to live and die how they want. Right? But obviously, like, if you only die because you think you're not worthy of being alive because the world has convinced you of that and, like, you're gay, like, don't kill yourself because of them. Fuck them. Stay alive. Live your gayest life, bro. But obviously, like, if you want to do chosen death, if you feel like it's your time and, like, you've lived a good life and it's like, okay, I'm good, then, like, I don't, you know, it's not my business what you do with your life. You know what I mean? But again, like, I don't know if Ethan has consistent values in this way. You know what I mean? Ethan feels like someone who's really dumb and I love him. And he doesn't think th thinks thinks he doesn't think things through very much. And so I expect him to have like pretty like basic takes about these things. But again, he can't ask for nuance and all these other things when he doesn't give it to other people in conversation. No. It's time to look in the mirror. You're a fucking anti-Semitic person. I know. Because being racist is the worst thing in your life. It's the worst thing you can be in your world. And yet here we are, calling me a Zionist. Keep it going, man. Enough is the only one that can save us. <laughs> Do you see what I'm doing? I'm trying to make light of a heavy, difficult topic. That's what I fucking did. So go be Yeah, it says my family is Palestinian living in Israel and they deal with harassment constantly and not just recently for decades ran off the road attacked homes and shops vandalized girl I believe it girl be angry this is your time this is your chance go be angry go to Twitter be with your people see how okay why isn't Ela reacting why isn't she engaging in a real way is she just like, my husband's crazy? Like, what is she thinking right now? See, my husband and I talk about all this stuff. We're like, mm-mm. If it's stuff like this, like, you you know what I mean? This is crazy. Mm. I, don't, I don't love this. I don't, even as like, if I was his friend, I'd be like, hey, bro. But this is the thing. No one in his life can talk it through with him because they don't even know. Like, they don't even know, which is fine. Like, I get it, but, like, they don't even know. Oh, now is your chance. You've been waiting. Celebrate. It's, it's, it's time to call oh, Ethan a Zionist and a racist and a fucking genocidal freak. You can run in the past. Jesus says, I think she probably agrees with him. Well, even if they agree, like... It does, well, I guess, I guess it does feel like if they both really hardcore agree, it's fine. And by the way, they can agree with each other. Okay, that's another thing. Okay, to be more nuanced, they're allowed to have this opinion. How about that? Okay, let's try to challenge ourselves. They're allowed to have this opinion. And I still don't think they're evil people. I just don't think people are evil. Evil in the, the, the bullshit sense we've been convincing ourselves of. I don't think they're like serial killers or serial rapists or sex traffickers or something. Like, right, they have, like, a different relationship because, like, all of us do. All of us have a different relationship with when we support things. So, like, I guess it's just his opinion. And he can have that opinion? How do we feel about that? You know what I mean? Like, everyone just has their opinion. I mean, people believe in God, so, like, you know, who cares about reality? <laughs> Cheers with your friends. Ethan's. Ethan's genocidal. Hold hands and skip in the daisies. Smell the beautiful air of Ethan being a genocidal Zionist. And then when you're done, you can handle my circumcised, tiny Jewish cock delicately into your mouth. <laughs> like a miniature, um, what do you call those kosher hot dogs that everyone loves? Hebrew national? Like a, like a little Hebrew national appetizer plate with a toothpick in it. That's what my dick is. And you're going to delicately put it in your mouth. And you're going to like it. Ethan, please, I'm married. 
Leo says he can have his opinions and we can disagree. I agree with that. Ari says they're Israeli. They're not evil. They're just loyal to the side they're on. I mean, hey, with loyalty being so sparse in the world, you know, Cass says who cares about reality? I don't even know if I care about a girl. I'm trying to find it. But girl, what is it? What even is it? You know, I'm still watching Love is Blind and I think that's a good show. So what is even real? What is even real? You know what I mean? I don't even know. Like it. Enjoy. Enjoy everybody. Let the let the haters feast. I'm here for you. Let us all enjoy. It's Shabbat after all. It's Friday. Let's feast. Let's break the challah. Let's let's you know what I mean? Let's have a drink. It's time to feast. Happy Friday, everybody. Thank you, Zach. I'm ready to move on. Thank you. <laughs> Any comments? I know people Yo, Discord, I love nothing more than seeing you guys tweet links at each other to try to like uh debunk each other's like facts. I love this. Fight, 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 fight. Discord's having a fight about who's right about Israeli-Palestinian news articles. And I fucking live for it. Ooh, this is a fact. Ooh, this is a link for this. Ooh, this is a link. I love it. Please say, uh, I want to give it, if anyone wants to say anything. Thoughts and prayers, everybody. Thoughts or prayers. Throw them up. Now's the time. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Megan, for the gifted. Zionist. She must be a Zionist to gift me right now. Mm. Zionism. She must be a Jew. She's probably a Jew. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> and by the way. Anouk must be a Zionist. <laughs> he's singing. He's singing, he's singing so much on this show. It's true. true. Uh. <laughs> this one's exciting. <laughs> You know, I would be so much better off not even talking about this stuff, but I can't help it. I got to speak my fuck. I get it. I get it. I've been there. I've been there. My brain loops are like is obsessed with one thing until I solve it. Like, I get it. Fucking mind. That's who I am. That's always always been. And that's why you guys watch this show, frankly. And as far as Jews go, I'm about as un-Jewish as they come. Okay. I don't fucking care about any of that shit. Mm -hmm. All right, let's talk about Willy Wonka. <laughs> Bro. Is Willy Wonka a Zionist? That's the real question. Was the Candyland um, an allegory for uh, apartheid Israel? Mm. So I think they're done. Okay, so that's it. What do you guys think? I mean, overall, I really think it's really difficult for Ethan and Ela to have a nuanced perspective on this. But to be fair... I think it would be very difficult for anyone to have it because, again, uh, there's like too many conversations happening around the subject. Uh, but, you know, and so many of our values come into play with it. Overall, I've enjoyed the discussion we've had, and I think we did a pretty good job over going over the articles and the video and figuring out all of those things. So I think I think we did pretty good in that regard. Ultimately, though, I do see too much bias and just like too much, you know, um, I don't know if anyone in this conversation can be as honest as they'd like to be about it because there's so much shame from the bubbles if you don't answer correctly. I just think both sides are way too shamey. And so no matter what you do, um... I just think you probably will have somebody who hates it. And if that's, you know, if that's how you're going to do things, then the nuance isn't, you know, it's not going to come from the groups that have already made a decision. You know what I mean? Thank you.